Noster News yet again. How are you doing? Another Noster News. This is going to be a really boring one because the week has been particularly boring. Like <laughs> nothing, nothing has happened. happened. Yeah. Nothing it's just has been happened. a sleeper. Yeah, absolute <laughs> sleeper. But before we jump into all of the uh, boring craziness, yeah. uh, I do want to just go ahead and start off with a big shout out. You got to meet my dad this morning. Oh which yeah, was very cool. That was awesome. He yeah. came by my apartment to drop off. Uh, we got for Nostrica upcoming. This is one of his many amazing designs. We got a little Nostradamus ostrich here yeah so uh and he drew that right yeah or he he does all kinds of different art so i think this is probably like an illustrator but he takes various images together mm-hmm. draws collages it all together he I does see. animation as well right. sculpture and i can see there's like a purple ostrich right there if you can see oh yeah it says nostradamus across the the top here and then a bunch of ostrich feathers and all kinds of little references all over so it's it's really cool and is that one going to be for sale in lightning store or somewhere i well i don't know about lightning store um but my hope is that you know my dad's not super deep in this stuff yet mm-hmm. um so maybe we'll put it up on shopify or something easy just mm-hmm. in case other people wanted to, to wear it but maybe we can do that with a lightning extension and then eventually i'll help him get a btc pay server set up when we have time and all that so, nice yeah. it seems like that kind of thing it should be easy enough soonish is that is there somebody who's doing kind of the Full stack, easy to, you know, almost as easy as to use Domus, easy enough to set up a Shopify with BTC Pay Server? I want to say there's already extensions. I think Strike has a Shopify extension. Um, I think there's a few others that do all You're saying so you're listing on Shopify and just mm-hmm. taking payment via Lightning? Yeah, with it's like Strike. as simple as just downloading a plugin and be able to accept yep, uh, yeah. BTC. So anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll help him with that at some point. Eventually, it'd be super cool to like, okay, get get his own node, you yep. know, BTC pay server instance, or even, as we'll talk about later today, maybe get his own Ellen Bits running on there. Yeah. Make it super easy to do that. But yeah. When we have more time, we'll get that set up. But in the meantime, this is cool, and I'll have at least one more surprise design for Nostrica. So. Oh, you've got another one. It, I do. Did he do... Yeah, he did too. Oh wow! Yeah. And it's coming on the trip. I got it in my house. All right. So, and we're <laughs> we're actually leaving Friday, right? That's right. So mm-hmm. today's Wednesday. So we're we're two days away mm-hmm. from the main, tr- you know, the main launch point. And then I think Saturday we're going to be in. We've got the house locked down. That's right. And we've got I think we've got a video already scheduled for Saturday. Yeah, we need to get a couple of those like just like get the times together. But yeah. we have at least one that we're going to aim for for Saturday. Um, and then I've got a couple more that are interested. We just need to. Put put pen to paper, but yes, right. and anyone listening to this, if you want to make sure you get on our our uh, uh, slots, like we got a lot of interest. Yeah, in we should exciting. put a calendar together, or just you know DM us or whatever. Yeah, we'll... and I'm sure we can do it very informally. Like, yeah, you know, just take people from the conference. But Easy. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Yeah. yeah, and I think I saw a note yesterday that you know the Nostrovia podcast guys. Oh, I I mean I'm familiar with podcasts. But yeah. I, I don't know the guys. Yeah. I, I don't know the guys, but I saw them on Nostra writing a note that they're. I think they're going to have podcast equipment on site oh amazing so they're gonna probably do some recording and kind of pull people in there so cool maybe we can, maybe we can do it with them get get one with them maybe pull them in and we can do a video at our place so i love it yeah it'll be nice to meet them because it's the same i think as g sovereignty is the same guy who did he's doing the nostrovia podcast and i think he's also the guy who did the nostrocket that we talked oh, about right, the right? so those thing. are yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the same yeah cool so, can't wait so much uh so much going on what else is going on so so for uh, Nostrica, we're flying into San Jose, then mm-hmm. taking a car mm-hmm. into Uvita, where the main conference is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're hanging out a bunch. Like the main, what's the what's the overall feel of the conference? Like it's a little bit unconference. There's some stuff scheduled. You know, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm so bad at this stuff. I haven't even like looked yet. Like I think I signed up to do something. I have no idea if I'm still on there. I, I need to like look at that. We should do that today. Right. But I mean, honestly, whatever. Like I think it's cool that there's some stuff scheduled. But the reality is, the beauty of these things are you just get 300 like yeah. nostriges together, yeah. and it's going to be awesome. Like even if it's just nonstop chit chatting with people. Right. You know, and but then uh, there's also a virtual component. I think there's whatever. Oh, that's few, right. Hundreds of I think. I thought seven, eight hundred people, maybe more, wow. signed up in like the virtual conference. So there must be some like structure of when they pipe in, or you know how we sort of get the content and discussions piped out to the virtual attendees. Very cool. I, yeah, I mean, I knew there was going to be some kind of virtual component, but I didn't know it was that big already. Damn. Yeah, I, I think it's All bigger right. than the in person. If Let's I go, because I because I was like, you know, as I always, I'm like very late to sign up and <laughs> <laughs> register for everything, and I kind of relate. I can relate. <laughs> And then they're like, well, you could just do virtual. And I looked at it, the list was like, I think double the size or more. So <laughs> it's a good sign. It's a good sign. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I saw, I think I th- saw a note from uh, Jeff Gardner. Do you know who that is? Um, I've, I've seen his name around. I, I don't know him personally, but um, I've seen his name around a lot. And he's hosting a Noster for non devs workshop. Oh, cool. Um, so I kind of want to go there. You know, he's got to post, see what that's all about. I mean, you know, nominally, I can do some software development, but I wouldn't consider myself. <laughs> 
a Noster dev. I'm more like a, a Noster video creator. Yeah. <laughs> CMO. <laughs> <laughs> One of many PMMs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, that that's a workshop that I'm excited about. And then I think a lot of the evening activities are, you know, go kind of visit the local dining establishments or drinking establishments and just kind yeah. of hang out. And well, I'm super stoked because I've never been to Bitcoin Jungle. And so my understanding is Ubita is Bitcoin Jungle, or at least they're like super close. So I want to go and like, I mean, I don't know, I guess we'll be there on Sunday. I don't know if it's Saturday or Sunday, but there's a farmer's market every week where you can buy, you know, all kinds of stuff, mm. all in Satoshi's, all with lightning. Mm-hmm. And the beautiful thing about that market, so I've heard, again, I haven't been there yet, but I can't wait, mm. is that, you know, normally you think of Bitcoiners as, you know, the whatever, a certain kind of crowd. <laughs> but, but what I've heard is that this group is also like extremely hippie. Like you can buy like your like crystals for mm. sats and stuff. <laughs> so, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see that mashup and yeah, I'm excited for it. Right. Right. And so what, yeah, what is the, what is the feel of, is Bitcoin jungle a person or a place or is it like Bitcoin park? So my or- understanding is it's, um, you know, all of these things are kind of loosely defined, but okay. it's a community. And it's in the same way, I think it's more analogous to like Bitcoin Beach with El Salvador. Okay. And so Bitcoin Beach was just, you know, initially some merchants started accepting Bitcoin mm-hmm. and then that started swelling over time. Uh-huh. And then there's like a, okay, this is like a self-sustaining circular economy. And then Bitcoin Jungle, there are a couple of guys, I don't know them, but they sound really interesting, decided that we want to do something similar in Costa Rica mm-hmm. and in Bitcoin Jungle. And so they guys, they went out there and did the hard work of talking to merchants, getting the first cluster. And I don't know how many there are now, but I've heard there's many, many merchants that accept Bitcoin Lightning, more coming every week. And actually, um, the guys that built the Bitcoin Beach wallet, Galois, are also the software providers for the Bitcoin Jungle wallet. I see. So they have their own custom wallet as well. And is Uvit the location that is the center of Bitcoin Jungle or is near? That is it. That's That's my understanding. Okay, cool. So we'll get to sort of be plugged in. I've seen the name you know, forever all over the place, but I never really understood. Is this a person? Is this a place? <laughs> totally. Yeah. We'll be um, there live. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Buying, so buying some crystals, <laughs> buying some crystals, maybe, maybe we can get some t-shirts. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you alluded to the, uh, the non events of the oh week. My God. <laughs> so obviously, uh, SVB had a little bit of a stumble. Yeah. If you want to, you know, treat it lightly, but, uh, but yeah, what, what are sort of your, what was your sort of reaction to the whole thing? You know, it's, it's, it's crazy because it's like, you know, you, you have these mixed feelings cause it's like kind of like as Bitcoiners, it's like literally the whole reason that Bitcoin was created, you know, the first block, right. Yep. Chancellor on the brink of bailouts. Yep. That, that was the, the headline published in the first block. And so like literally Bitcoin was created because the banking system, you know, takes in deposits, mm-hmm. creates a lot of new money out of thin air gambles with it, loses, and uh, as I said, one of my one of my rap songs back in the day is uh, back in the day, um, privatize the gains, socialize the losses. Right. Right. That, that, that's like the really kind of shitty thing about our system is, you know, the upside is privatized. If you're a banker and you make, you know, whatever risky loans, and I'm not saying that's what happened this time. I know it's slightly different. That was 2008, right. 2009. And then the loans go bad and then, you know, you're going to get bailed out. So it's kind of like it's, it's privatized <laughs> while you're the bank and then it's socialized when they need to get bailed out. And it's just, right. it's very unfair. And that's the reason Bitcoin was created. And so when you see all this stuff happening, and again, I'm not like a macro expert. Right? Like I listen to people like Lynn Alden. I think she's mm-hmm. really smart. You know, she certainly explains things very well. And you listen to all this stuff and it's just like, you kind of see it coming, right? right? It's like, you know, there's too much debt in the system. You know that the banks are technically insolvent. You know that, you know, we just did the whiplash of money printing for years, extreme money printing, and then right. going to, you know, raising rates to 5% or whatever it is. And it's like, without being a total expert, it's like, well, of course, some shit's going to break. Right, yeah. And um, what I was surprised about was that SVB went first, mm-hmm. or I guess technically second if uh, Silvergate went first. Um, and so anyway, so it's crazy. I mean, we're obviously in San Francisco, and so you know, a lot of people I know yeah. were just tagged by this and yeah, people yeah. completely outside of this community, mm-hmm. friends, you know, j- just a lot of people were like, yo, what the fuck? And so I think I don't really have too much great commentary on it other than it's probably a good thing that in the short term, all of the startups are able to make payroll. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that's happening because right. that, that would have been a huge problem for a lot of people. Right. Um, and yet, I don't know, like a lot of the lessons people seem to be learning are just, we'll have multiple accounts on multiple banks. It's like, oh, that's a start, but like, <laughs> right. why did this thing happen in the first place? So I I hope that these events can kind of be gentle orange pilling moments, but it's kind mm-hmm. of coming to the point fast where it's like, look, 
like the time for gentle orange pilling is kind of years ago, right? And so, you know, I've got a lot more people reaching out to me saying like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, what this Bitcoin thing, like maybe it's real. How do I get it, you know, into it? And I don't know. I just hope it's not too little too late. I hope people are able to make the jump. I mean, I saw this morning, apparently Credit Suisse now looks like they may be insolvent. Like right. it's not like we're out of the woods yet. And right. um, I don't know. It's just a really weird, weird time. Yeah. How have you been reacting to it all? Yeah. I mean, it, I, I would say it's, you know, both surprising and not surprising because like, I think a lot of the reason that you know, we look at like Noster or Bitcoin or these decentralized technologies is because I think a lot of people, you know, myself included, collectively believe that, you know, there are there are risks that are built up in the system that don't get, that they don't become visible mm-hmm. until some catastrophic event. You know, like people say, I think it's, who is it? Some of these famous for saying this, but you know, kind of like the turkey. Right? Uh, I think it was uh, Nassim Taleb. Okay, yeah, <laughs> like turkey you know, doing fine, growing every day, and then Thanksgiving comes, and he's just dead and catastrophic. You know, yeah, probably <laughs> Taleb, the Black Swan event, right? So I think like that. That I think you can look around and see that in many places, and you know, I think in how we publish and communicate, I think those same kinds of risks exist, and that's why you know when I see Nostra, it just you know lights me up because I'm like, okay, this is a way to remove those risks and reset in a new system, a better foundation. Um, and I think, I think that's kind of, you know, I, I don't think the banking system that we have today is going to go away overnight. Yeah. I, I like the fact that there are alternatives that at least let us experiment with new ways that it could work. And I don't think everybody's just going to transition, but I think having a credible alternative means that the existing system has to figure out how to be better. Yeah. And, you know, maybe over time, it loses its importance or it fades because of the risks that are built up in it that we can't otherwise see. You know, and I think that's true for any centralized, you know, take it money or media or communication or, you know, almost anything is better when you push more of the decision making out to the edges instead of having it sort of at that center. Um, so I, I, I would say like, I'm, I think it's good that people can make payroll yeah, because I think, you know, yeah. making innovation continue to be able to work in this way. Like we don't have yet a new way. Like Nostrocket of the world are such a great, you know, early example of the kinds of experimentation, but it's nowhere near ready to right, right, actually right. be the way we we assemble teams and drive innovation forward. So I think the fact that deposits are protected is a good thing. I think the fact that equity holders got wiped is a good thing because that's like it's functioning yeah, as it should. Exactly. Right. It's like you got this capital <laughs> at risk. You hope that it grows, and sometimes it doesn't. It goes yeah. to zero. I think that's totally fine. You know, wipe it out is fine. But I think having deposits. Yeah. Uh, secured is, you know, I think a near term need to continue being able to build new things. Um, and, you know, over time, I hope that there's less dependence on that, that form, but, uh, but it's going to take some time. I think we need better tools. <laughs> yeah. We need better tools. And as you said, I mean, I think the analogy with social media and with publishing in general, uh, is great in the sense that you don't really need something like Noster. Although I, I although we've talked many times about how it's the ability to experiment that's so exciting, better product experiences, but you know, at the same time, it's like you don't need Noster until all of a sudden you really need Noster yeah. when your Twitter account gets shut down or whatever. So I think it's an important lesson. I mean, the only question I tend to agree with you, you know, if I was doing kind of probabilities, maybe 80%, you're right, that it's going to be still this gradual transition on the Bitcoin side. Yeah. On the other hand, if stuff starts spinning out of control fast, I mean, you never know, because I think one of the interesting lessons from the SVB thing is in the old days, um, if you wanted to get your money out, like they were like in the great depression, they were like lines. Yeah. yeah. Right? Well, in the digital age money in theory, even though it's much sl- slower in a non Bitcoin world, like you can still move it online, which is much faster. Yeah. And so, you know, people are on there blaming Twitter and all this. So obviously that was, you know, something that accelerated it. It was obviously a systemic problem. Yeah. Twitter didn't cause it, but we did see when people can communicate online quickly, use their phones to get their money out. Of course, things move much faster. So I, I would not, rule out a possibility that suddenly for Bitcoin happens faster than we think. I'm not saying it's the likely outcome, right? but in a world where a lot more people, you know, are going to move things a lot faster. And now there is an off ramp to Bitcoin that yes, you have to learn. Yes. You need better tools, but like if you do learn it, you can do it almost instantly. So I I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see how fast it all goes. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, I'm a fan of it getting there as fast as possible because I think giving people more control of their future is like just always a better thing. But I think we also need, how should a multi-sig custody yes, across, exactly. you know, the corporate officers of some entity, or should they, <laughs> should we even have corporate officers? Maybe we exactly, should exactly. have just, you know, pull requests. and. <laughs> well, and you know, it, it's also gotten me thinking, you know, honestly, right? Like this, I never in a million years would have guessed SVB would be the first one, right? Mm. And so it has gotten me thinking this and some other things 
um, that, you know, corporations, I've, I've always just said, okay, for every company I work with, almost exclusively across the board, just do a Delaware C Corp. Mm -hmm. That's where we have case law, this and right. that. But as we've talked about, like, I mean, that may not be the ideal structure, certainly in like 10 or 20 years. Right. But maybe it's faster than we think. There's a lot of risks to being domiciled in any country. I'm not saying there's other countries that are better than the US right now. I look across right. the map and it's like Singapore maybe, but that's, you know, there's no democratic society there. So things could shift quickly. It's like, where do you, where do you domicile? Yeah. Because there's other stuff. I don't know if you saw like, um, not to go too off topic, but there was the Lightning Labs issue with Taro and all that stuff, oh, yeah. which is ridiculous. <laughs> but like, that's a judge and that's a, the court system doing something I think is pretty silly. Right. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I do sincerely hope and I want to put a lot of my focus and attention the next year or two into stuff like the Nostroca and other yeah. ideas. Like wh what does the next version of a 21st century online native corporation look like? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think one of the biggest uh, things that needs to be solved there besides just the tooling is some definition of how or some experimentation with how governance yeah. in that should work. Because when you're dealing with a transaction that's going to settle right now, you actually don't need a lot of governance. But when you're talking about a thing you're going to try to build together that you you get to reap the fruits of 10 years from now. Exactly. You're inherently putting trust in the people who are doing the thing and organizing it and you know understanding how to think about that. We just don't we don't have much of the experimentation run. And most of the experimentation that claims to have been run was <laughs> run in ways that yeah. I would say are not fruitful for even understanding better. So what I want to do is escalate our collective understanding by running small scale experiments 100% that test the downside cases. The upside case is fine. Everybody makes lots of money. Great. Okay. Right. But the downside case where, hey, like person A disagrees with person B on the direction of what product should be built next for the thing that we're aiming for that's going to be great for humanity 10 years from now, that we haven't prosecuted that kind of adversarial trust required relationship. Um, so I, I almost feel like we should just be you know, racing toward more of that kind of experimentation. 100%. And once we start to have, oh, I see how that goes wrong, or oh, I didn't expect that, but now, now we have a sense for that, then we can actually start to build those tools. And I think those will become, those, those tools, those governance processes will become the replacement for the you know, U.S. domicile Delaware C Corp over time, I would suspect. Um, but uh, you know, when you start getting involved in <laughs> securities... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You, you know, you sort of appreciate that there is, you know, if people are going to be issuing, you appreciate that there's some societal totally. governance. And today, the best we have is, you know, the SEC. And so. centuries of case law. Yep. I, again, yeah. I'm not taking anything away from that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I, I guess the takeaway is, the, you know, the call to action. We want to see a lot of experimentation with what does, if you were redesigning a corporation for the 21st century yeah. with Bitcoin, with Nostr, online native, what would, what does it look like? Yeah. And and also I guess related to that, but a very different. Did you? I don't know if you caught the the discussion I had with Joseph Jacks about open source everything. I listened to like the first twenty minutes of it. <laughs> he, he was definitely very animated. It was good. <laughs> I, I haven't listened to the rest yet. It was but. good. I I liked that. Uh, it wasn't like super Nostr focused, but one of the things I liked about it, it was very open source focused. Yeah, which and is I awesome. Think in a sense, the all the reasoning is in support of kind of the like why does Nostr exist? All the reasoning is consistent with that. Um, I think he's trying to do it as a venture capital firm yeah. that, you know, it's similar to like, I think the questions that we talk about a lot, you know, as kind of angel venture investors is, you know, how do you figure out where is worth investing versus where are going to be just like wealth for humanity that is not going to be part of a kind of corporate structure entity? Yeah, I agree. And I, I want to finish the rest of the episode. I think, you know, his, his take on open sourcing everything, I, I generally love that. And I think it's a great idea. And I think, yeah, it's a really interesting question for us to figure out. I, I guess that's what's really cool to me is I feel like we're, we get to be a little bit of pioneers yeah, here yeah. And, and I'm comfortable taking those risks. I, I mean, you know, we're transitioning from the old world to the new world yeah. and like, how's it going to work out? I don't fucking know. You know, like this is, good, this is, this is our experiment, yeah. right? So yeah. it's well, that's fun. what's fun. It, if it were all figured out, you know, it's just <laughs> another SaaS tool that you sell to all the big corporations, like, okay, I get it, but that's just boring you know, in a sense. Yeah. yeah. Relative so. to some of these things, these questions that are, you know, big societal, you know, political, societal, philosophical questions that are all, you know, you've, you're forced to deal with. So the very least we know the next decade will not be boring. <laughs> 
Won't be boring. <laughs> and speaking of stuff that's not boring, so <laughs> as the old world collapses, <laughs> in the meantime, uh, did you see yesterday OpenAI put out GPT-4? <laughs> I saw that, yeah. Did yeah. you play with it yet? I haven't played with it. I read a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. um, what I what I understand from just reading about it, and I, you know, I see people make demos and stuff and show things that you can do. My understanding is that it's now it can perform in like the top ten percent um, on like the LSAT or GMAT or mm -hmm. some of the standardized tests, which I think before I think GPT three or three point five was in the bottom ten percent. Oh, I didn't realize it was that low. Wow. I think it was like you know abysmally low, and I think because there's more rooting in fact and fact fact based knowledge is more kind of rootable or kind of you can you can root the concept of what is being generated with some other factual information source that makes it, it guides it in like a, a more like less hallucination, more facts. Yeah. So I think the, um, I think that is a pretty big, interesting breakthrough. I don't know how to test it myself. I'd like to like to play with it at some point, but I, I don't know how to, I don't have a GMAT lying around or <laughs> LSAT <laughs> test. If you You're do. not prepping for the LSAT. <laughs> DK. But, uh, but yeah, I, th I think it'll be fun to play. I also seem to have heard did I read right or that, that you can write Pong, you know, the video game Pong. Oh, yeah. You I can write that. Pong in like, you know, a minute or two. Is yeah. That... I mean, I, I didn't try it myself. I think I saw there's like a thread about this yeah. where someone basically got the code for Pong and then maybe put it in Replit or something and like within 10 minutes or something had the original game of Pong. And so, I mean, it's cool, right? Because if you zoom out, right, like in the Pong comes in the 70s, I think. It, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, like, we've gone in 50 years from like, oh my God, here's this groundbreaking thing to an AI building that for you very quickly. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I think for me, what's interesting with GPT-4, I played with it a little bit last night. I was asking it some questions. I, it was better than GPT-3, but I didn't see a huge advancement in sort of just answering my basic questions. But there's two things that stuck out to me, one good and one very concerning. The good thing is uh, images. So oh, I didn't right. do this myself. It's multimodal now, right? Multimodal. So yeah. I couldn't figure out how to upload an image. I didn't play with it that long. But I did see people that would say, hey, here's this image. Like, Describe to me what's going on in there. Make an analogy or write a poem about it. And like, it can do it. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Yep. So GPT-3 was just text. Now you have image. I don't know if it's, um, I guess, video as well, maybe audio. Anyway, so that's cool. Now, what I'm more concerned about is um, it does seem like, you know, and even Sam Altman's tweet, you know, he was like, this is the best and most aligned AI we've ever had. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, what does most aligned actually mean, right? And right. so, you know, I asked some questions, not even that probing, but like, you know, questions about the future of San Francisco and just kind of like, you know, right. questions that are not super obvious. And uh, I did get some answers that I felt were a little um, sensitized, let's say. Right. And it's kind of like, oh man, like I don't want woke GPT-4. Like right. this, is, this is not a good thing. So what I'm really interested in is, um, I mean, my personal belief, I guess, I don't know if you saw, uh, Amjad gave a good talk about this. I tend to agree more with him where like systems that are just left alone to bloom are probably going to be safer for humanity in the long run than trying to align. Mm. Um, I'm not an expert on that stuff, like giant grain right. of salt, but that's just my like intuition. And so what did encourage me was I saw other people were getting at least GPT-3 now to run on their computers and their phones. Mm -hmm. So that's yep. not GPT-4. We've yep. talked about like, obviously it's one yep. generation behind, but that's pretty damn fast. Yeah. And so I really, really do hope we get to a world where quickly quicker than we think AI can be run locally. Yep. I think yep. that's really critical to not having either some like, yeah, like super, you know, politically correct bot controlling us right. or some other, you know, company getting to control us. And is that, us. that's both like the models and the data and like everything can be yeah. run totally independently disconnected from the internet. Either? That was my understanding. Hmm. I haven't verified that, yeah, yet, yeah. but that was like the talk of the town besides GPT-4 in the last day or two on AI Twitter. Right. Okay. But we're gonna verify. Yeah, we, we, we need to verify. But but yeah. there's, um, they were definitely able to run some version of GPT three on I think a Nexus, like a phone. It's like an Android device. Yeah. 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 So it's awesome. Yeah. Cool. And then other uh, other things are happening while while they were launching GPT four. We were hanging out in person with oh, a yeah. bunch of people. This was much more fun. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about that? Yeah. So I, I don't know how much uh, is uh, all disclosable or whatever, but uh, there's a place in San Francisco now where <laughs> a bunch of kind of Nostra Lightning people gathered. Yeah. Do you want to? I don't know. You may have a better sense of what's, yeah. What's I can say this. so. Um, so DZ, uh, which you guys, some of you may know, Danny. Um, you know, he recently launched an office here and I've been very fortunate to work closely with him for a while now. And, um, yeah, we kind of just have been talking for a while. Like, wouldn't it be cool 
if there was a place for originally the idea was lightning people and now lightning and Nostra yep. people to just hang out in SF. Yep. And so, you know, we did like a really kind of last minute prototype where I was like, I don't know if they'll actually come like we did this on a Friday. Yeah. Um, but we had a pretty solid turnout for our first event. It was great. And it was super fun, right? It was great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I connected with old friends who I hadn't seen in a long time. Yeah. I met a bunch of new people. Yeah. I met Danny, like kind of really got to jam with him a little bit, yeah. which was cool. And we're, I've got to, I can't wait to just sit down with him and be like, okay, oh, yeah. let's build it up from scratch. Oh, right. Yeah. Like, let's talk lightning. Let's layer it in. What's the understanding? What does this thing do? You know, what are the, what are the, what's known, what's unknown kind of really, really tear it down from, I told him I need an ELI five lesson. Well, and the beautiful thing about Danny is he's one of the few people in the world. I would say maybe like he and Roy that can go from like Eli five to yeah. like the very, very tip of the like right. current development. How, um, how did he get like, how did he get there? What was, is he just been like d involved in the development of this from the very beginning? Like the very first, I don't know, like proposals of what lightning should be or how, how did he kind of get so... Well, not to like, um, you know, brag on Danny too much or whatever. Obviously, I'm a big fan. I, I think he's... I mean, he was amazing, obviously. He's an exceptional I just engineer. met him, so I have, I, have, I have no horse in the race. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He <laughs> he's like an exceptional engineer among exceptional engineers. Yeah. And so th that's the first thing. But, you know, he's been working in this space for a long time. Um, he was at BitGo and then he was at uh, Cash App and did a lot of the lightning infrastructure there. And then meanwhile, he had his own, you know, sort of bootstrap personal node, DZ, which according to the Lightning Labs terminal rank mm -hmm. um, is the number two uh, node on the whole network right now. So he's been in there um, for, yeah, I want to say DZ's a year and a half, two years old now, something mm -hmm. like that. So he's been playing with and experimenting with a lot of things. And now obviously they're doing a lot with the ordinals, which I know is a bit of a, <laughs> a controversial subject now. But even just like putting that aside is pure um, lightning knowledge is quite impressive. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I like the fact that they're just like out there doing stuff. Yeah. Like the ordinals, we, we were talking a lot about the inscription <laughs> stuff they're doing and and the, they were talking, they're going to use an existing wallet, but build their own marketplace. Oh yeah. For these, right. If so right. if you guys, if you haven't played with this yet, um, so they, in addition to their main node product, they have, um, both APIs, which I don't know if they're public yet, but they probably will be soon for mm -hmm. inscribing, um, images on ordinals. Then they also have a new wallet called NoSoft. I believe it's NoSoft or N-O-S-F-T, I think. Eventually, they change the name so it's easier to pronounce, but dot .xyz. And so that is a place, it's a web wallet that integrates with Albi. And mm -hmm. so you basically upload your keys into Albi, your Lightning keys and your Nostra keys. And when you buy a an ordinal or when you like inscribe, it's a really cool workflow. Like you pay in Lightning an invoice, mm -hmm. um, they do the inscription, and then they send the ordinal or the, the inscribed ordinal to your NoSoft wallet, which the keys for that, it, it's it's a they send it to your in pub, your Nostra pub, mm -hmm. and that's stored in your Albi. Right. So it's a really cool workflow. In your your Nostra pub, mm -hmm. they use as a as a Bitcoin address that's right. to hold the to hold the ordinal. To hold the ordinal, which has to be a Bitcoin address, right? Yeah, yeah. Which like I'm still trying to get my head around exactly how all of that. Yeah, to, to be together, clear, like I, I've only like kind of scratched the surface. This is all like cutting edge. This is like, cutting in edge. The last, yeah, this like is, week or two. You know? This is like we're <laughs> eating pizza, drinking beer, and yeah. you know, trying you know, hearing about the latest out of Danny's head. So, but it's super cool, and you know, we don't have this on the list, but we've talked about it before. I forgot what was the name of that uh, marketplace. Is it Nord Wallet or something? Uh, ooh, um, one of the marketplaces like a listing. Yeah, it's a Noster listing site for Bitcoin ordinals or for inscriptions. Ooh, that, that's not Mostro, right? Mostro is the... Mostro the, is the peer-to-peer -peer local -peer. Bitcoins, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, anyways, I'll remember, but it's like Nord or something like that. And so that's just one example. But the point is his wallet, Nosoft, can integrate with that or any of these Noster compatible marketplaces. Mm -hmm. And so that's super cool because, again, and then it's interesting because you start thinking these marketplaces are like you know, probably the margins on all marketplaces will go to zero pretty quickly. Yeah. Because if, if they're all interoperable, right? But I don't know. It's exciting. For sure. So yeah. And if there's other SF people or Bay Area people that are that listen to this podcast, you're in an Oster, hit us up and, you know, we can we can extend some more invites to the next one. Yeah. So like, where's best? Like on Noster in DMs? Or do yeah. you have like a note that you've written about it? Or? No, I mean, it's still pretty like informal right now, but yeah. just DM me on Noster and we can take it from there. Cool. That was a lot of fun. So in, you said they're happening kind of monthly. Is that the typical cadence to think that's about? That's like the, that's what we're thinking about in, now. And Mondays are going to be the thing? Or we'll still? probably do a different night, actually. Okay. Monday was just for this one, but I more kinda, TBD. I'm voting <laughs> Tuesday, by the way. But <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I always have my Tuesdays free. Okay. Um, 
Okay, and I so where are we? So we we were talking about some uh, some updates. Uh, mm-hmm. Iris Desktop. You mentioned you mentioned the Iris. So Iris is a famous for being one of the top. Iris dot two is one of the top web clients, and I think yeah. you're saying that they now have a desktop client. Yeah, I just read that yesterday, and I actually haven't had a chance to t- test it out yet. But I'm very excited because I hope this is one that works with my you know my old Mac Intel uh, mm. chip. So right. I haven't tested it yet, but um, I think it's great that you're starting to see new like desktop apps. And is that um, like Mac, PC, Linux? I think it's everything. Kind of everything. Yeah. Okay. Wow. But, more to be determined soon, but I was just excited to see a desktop app because I think, like you said, the reason that you know stuff like Domus wasn't working on my Mac is because I think you said it was um, not a Mac native app. But there's some some way when you publish to iOS, it can work with the new chips. Yeah, I, I think the the new the M ones and onward, so M twos and all those um, are Apple Silicon that can run iOS apps exactly natively. Yeah. And I think I have a. I have a Domus client, and I believe that's what it's doing. I think it's just running the, the. It, I mean, it's, it's a little different than I would have expected because I can like change the window size and it renders funny and stuff. Yeah. Um, which I would have guessed that the native Mac stuff wouldn't. So this might actually be a Mac OS specific thing. H- have I mean, you yeah. looked into it or no, not yet. Okay, because like it, it may be that it works with Intel. I don't know. No, no, I, I I definitely tried okay. Domus. Yeah, yeah, and it says it's not compatible. Okay, got it. So. Um, so yeah, I don't know the the details. I use Domus on my M1 all the time. That yeah. seems to be fine. Um, cool. And then other clients. So we saw uh, so Vitor Pamplona, who's the creator of Amethyst, has a new Amethyst point two five point one release. And that's it's got the some, Android client. That's the Android client. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like in you know the Domus is probably the most used, talked about uh, client in the iOS ecosystem, and I think there's plenty of others kind of coming along. Um, and then I think Amethyst is kind of the number one, kind of the Domus of the Android world. <laughs> I like that. If that makes sense. Cool. Um, and of course, you know, we're going to celebrate lots of new clients. We're not <laughs> not advocating everybody use one, but these are a couple of the early ones that are really well done. Totally. And then another one that's really well done. I mean, these web clients just keep coming up. And it's, it's so it. exciting to see so many new, so much good work being put into this. And it's so, it's all pretty early. But um, where was this one? Yeah, this, I'm going to just pop it up here just to give a quick shout out because I just I just opened it up. I thought it looked really nice. Um, so this is this new client called Primal. So it's primal.net. Hmm. And, you Good know, name. it's just, it it looks and feels a bit <laughs> like, <laughs> Mark, safe from banking collapse today. So it looks and feels a little bit like Twitter's got the sidebar, really nice iconography. It feels yeah. just like a really well thought out, you know, well designed app. Like so, you know, we sort of get, a little bit <laughs> get the memes going, yeah, the banks yeah. and the plebs. Yeah, <laughs> um, but they got some zaps. Yeah, so I, I just like to celebrate, uh, you know, new um, new clients getting built and you know more experimentation. So that's, that's the whole thesis. Whenever there's something really nice out there, I want to give it a shout out and, and get people playing and, and and give us feedback. Like if you play with something, you're like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I wish it had this feature. We'd love to hear that because then we could also try to. Advocate for that feature. Hear about other clients and and hear about where those you know where they might already have those features or be considering it. So yeah, yeah anything we can do to sort of help help get the word out about these new things. Cool. Um, Sh- should we go do the the stats? Let's do it. Yeah, it's I'm always stats excited. Time. Stats, stats time. time. Yeah, we need like some music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little a little we theme song there. there. Stats yeah. time. Woohoo! All right, let me make sure we're on this. Okay, so now we're on the stats time. All right. Uh, so first up, daily active users. I actually snapshotted this and tweeted about it yes yeah, um because i think it's it's this theme that we've talked about before and i think it's true and it's playing out to be true which is like yeah. you know if you look back here this is like mid jan you know it's kind of stumbling along kind of flat ish in the that what, was like 2000 yeah, yeah just just below maybe 1500 to 2000 range and then it kind of bumped a little bit and was was this the release of the client i think this was the release yeah, the of iOS. domus yeah. ios and then of course it fell because a lot of people popped on and but it, it fell to a newer high, and then it kind of plateaued around this. And you can just see it like slowly building. Like yeah. I don't know what this spike was. Maybe something happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then a little bit of build and a little bit of build. And it just, just I, I kind of said, I think, in the tweet, I said, you know, just existing long enough yeah. is how you win at this. And I think this chart really proves that idea out. It just... And I would just add that existing long enough when you have found fundament- sound fundamentals, right? Mm-hmm. Something that in theory, I know we have a lot to figure out, but that yeah. could scale. Yeah. So there's stuff that exists a long time, but if it's kind of like doomed at the very yeah. inception, right? Yeah. So I think that's the beauty of things. Systems like Bitcoin, Lightning, and Nostra. Yeah. And, and what are we at now? What is that? The 
this is not refreshed, so this is probably higher, uh, but it, this is a partial day, and we're at 13,000 high-quality pub key writing events cool. for the day. Yeah, that's and true. And I guess true that'll, that's, you know, we're only partially through the day. That'll pro- If I refresh right now, it's probably even over that. Cool. Um, so I think that's trending nicely. Here's weekly actives are also bumped up a little bit. Today we're at 22,500, nice. which actually, if you look at the totals... <laughs> So if the to- these are daily active. If you look at the total high quality and uh, uh, high quality end pubs, I think it's a, almost a million now. Really? Here's total users. Yeah, this is one I right? like to track. So we're at nine hundred thirty six thousand. This is profiles with bio. Yep. And so I'd call those like high ish quality yeah. users, right? Like not bots. Yeah, not not obviously bots. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's almost at a million. And so the weekly active is. You know, you could say only twenty two thousand. That's two percent. That's, that's yeah, pretty good. Two percent. But but I think these are you know, these are real people using it for the most part, I'd guess. So in the you know, call it in the tens of thousands of real people using it. Yeah. On a weekly basis, which is good. And you I think growing bit by bit. And I would say that that's actually quite good because I mean the kind of old school rule of thumb for the internet, right, is that about one percent of people yeah. that are reading on a forum are actually yeah. writing. So if we say there's on the order of 20,000 people writing and on the order of almost 1 million reading, that's actually, yeah, that's actually higher than, you know, the, the 1%. So that's, that's pretty, seems pretty realistic to me. Yeah. It's good. I got allergies. Sorry, I am. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I mute my mic and <laughs> get out of the way here. Uh, so total users. And then you wanted to look at zaps, obviously, right? Yeah, the zaps for sure. So these are total events, daily zaps. So I, I filtered out some of the mm-hmm. noise, and I've got the um, the kind of pink and orange here are the zap senders and zap receivers, which I thought was interestingly like similar in like the people number of people receiving and number number of people sending is like roughly at parity. Okay, um, which I thought was kind of kind of interesting and cool. Um, and those numbers are in the kind of like what are we at? You know, sixteen hundred on a given day. Are, are so zapping or is that receiving? These are zap senders or receivers. They're, okay. they're roughly in roughly the same, the same. Okay. You know, same range. They're, they're rough parity. And this is partial day, right? Yeah. Um, and th- that's interesting because if we're around, it was like 13,000-ish dailies and then call it 1,300-ish. So it's about 10% of people that are doing, yep. that are writing notes or zapping yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay. And I think like it's not even core to all clients yet, right? So Totally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, total zaps. Again, it I like this one. For the total. So we've got we two hundred thirty-one thousand total. Right. Um, Continuing to trend up into the zap, right. What we like to see. There, there was this uh, this max zap amount of ten million sats. Do you know what that was for? I don't know. I think I saw somebody messing around in. I think somebody did like a twenty-one million zap. Seriously, but it, but, it, but I think it was like a fake thing. Oh right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not confirmed. So I I don't know how serious. Well, these numbers actually, are. I want to pause here yeah. for a second because I think this is a really important point. This is something yeah. that Oscar Mary at Fountain has talked a lot about in the value for value context mm-hmm. and podcasting. And you know, obviously, that's very quickly kind of merging with Zaps yeah. on Nostr. Yeah. Same idea, basically, just you can send money attached to a note or whatever to a podcast to an episode. And so I think what's important about this chart is, you know even though the average zap amount might be pretty small. And mm-hmm. as we've talked about with Kevin Kelly, maybe you had a thousand true fans or 10,000 true fans and even small zaps, it adds up, right? Yep. But what's interesting is there is no, there's no cap. And I think that's a very important feature of this system working in the long run. Mm-hmm. It may be the case that, you know, you as a podcaster or content creator, you know, you only get, one or two super fans who happen to have a decent amount of BTC, yeah. but who really appreciate you. And a one zap worth 10 million sats, like that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And it only takes one, mm-hmm. just one person, like one, you know, um, donor, n- donors, not even right. The right word, one sponsor, patron. patron. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Yeah. Thank you. And so that's not possible here. And I, I don't think yep. we should underestimate the ability of like, small number, absolute numbers of people that really care and have the resources to do something, I think that's going to be a powerful thing in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a barbell. I think we're going to have that and we're going to have like, you know, both hundred million people get super excited about this one thing for a moment and throw it a few sats and <laughs> yeah, you know, onto that too. I so think both models will both, work. Both are. Yep. All right. 
Um, anything else on? I'm just curious. Oh, actually, yeah. What's going on with the relays? I thought this is interesting. Users per relay. So there's 38,000 writes, 38,000 reads from high quality pub keys on the Domus IO relay. Yeah. Which, um, which I, you know, it's the biggest, but I'd say that's kind of another, if you wanted to proxy how much people are using mm -hmm. the service, you know, kind of the protocol. Yeah. I think that's like a good way to triangulate some of it, you know, so kind of in that 35, 40,000 range. Yeah, that means um, that makes sense. Although it's interesting to me that Domus has kind of pulled away as the clear number one here, at least for now. Hmm. Like, um, I think if I recall, I don't remember if um, like Snort was pretty close now. I think they're still number two. Yeah, Snort is number two, I think, and they're at thirty three. So not that far in, actually in the range. Yeah. yeah, I think it's nice that and here's Noster Land. There's Eden, the paid yeah. relay from Camary. Camary, yeah. Uh, Nos Lol. <laughs> The good name. <laughs> BRB, which is, is that the NVK one? I think so, yeah. yeah. And then orangepill.dev. So, oh, I also saw, did you see that um, Arthur has one now? You mean a new one besides? Or maybe it was old news. W which one are you talking about? Uh, I just added it. Let me let me look. Oh, is oh there? Yeah. Well, because he had the relay that was like a super relay, and you could connect to it. And I, I did connect to that one a long time ago. Relay.noster.band? Is that the one? No. I just added it now. Like cool. meaning this morning. I don't even know. I didn't see an announcement. He didn't mention it to me, but I just noticed it. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it was in a note somewhere. But I just noticed, and I was like, "Oh, cool." <laughs> check out your relays. Um, nice. No, actually, no. I, I think I did have this one already. Okay. So yeah, it, it might be old news. I'm just catching up on it now. <laughs> but re regardless, I mean, it's interesting to me how he's gonna. Um, I'm just checking. No, yeah, I, I do have an Oscar band on there. But what's interesting to me is. Um, if he starts marketing that or not marketing, but like if, if that starts being seen more as a, you know, a, an independent relay for like individual users to actually connect to, mm -hmm. because a lot of different pieces, including some of the ones we'll talk about later, have been mentioning here are the different relays we like. We like Eden because it's paid and, you yep. know, spam free or whatever. And then a lot of people are talking about his relay, Nostra Band, but as kind of like the aggregator super relay because he applies his trust rank or value rank yep. and stuff like that. So I'm going to be curious to see over time if it kind of becomes one of those aggregator layers or if more people start seeing it as also like a normal relay they want to read and write to. Right. What, why would you not, like if it's an aggregator mm -hmm. relay, you're saying that it would only serve the function of aggregating, but would people only use it for reading then? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's actually writing to it as an example. Right, because he doesn't allow it? He doesn't accept? I'm writes. assuming he accepts both. I just think people think of it as the relay you, like, you want you know, clean information from. I see. So, so that's interesting. So I hadn't thought about this, but is it like he could pay, say, Eden mm -hmm. to read, and then he could retransmit that? along with five or 10 other paid ones, and he can kind of become like a... The aggregator. The aggregator. I don't think anyone's paying anyone right now, but I think that, I mean, he definitely, to the best of my knowledge, has the best aggregation read so far, but I don't think many people are writing to him yet. I see. Is my understanding. Right. But it, that seems reasonable that, that a relay might want to be just signal for yeah. reading and like write other places wherever you want, and they just sort of aggregate and do totally. all the reading. But then if a lot of people start reading from you and they could write there, like, does it make sense to do both? I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting too because I guess if you like if you republish notes that mm -hmm. are from a filtered set because somebody paid for it, I'm just trying to imagine how all the economics, you know, sort of where gravity is <laughs> for the economics in those relationships. Uh, how so? What do you mean? Well, let, let's say that you run a relay that um, is a paid-only relay, yeah. and the main reason that you would only accept those notes from paid is because you want the reading of that to be high quality. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're reading and you're aggregating across all those readers, do you end up sort of like, do you offer your reading aggregation as paid? And then are you really some skipping the read reader paying relationship that may emerge around a yeah, the, writing the, paid? These are fascinating <laughs> questions. And uh, I, I think, yeah, no one really knows, right? Like in the future, there's something we've talked about. Will more relays rate limit you and force you to mm. pay to read more? Right. That's possible. Right. I think it's hard to say where all this goes. Right. And actually, while we're on the topic, I wonder if this is actually a good time. I think we had it noted a little bit later on uh, we wanted to talk about. But uh, what was what was the one? There's there's a relay. Is it? Oh, Collider. Collider. Right? Yeah, Collider yeah. just published a new so, relay. So this is like very relevant. So might as well just skip ahead, right? Let's do it. So 
Collider has this new relay, and I assume this is, is Collider building their own relay software and operating, or is this just using some other software? I'm actually not sure. I mean, um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. But their relay, actually, let me, let me pop it up on screen here. Okay. I think they have their own client software. Right. So I think, yeah, I, I think of Collider as a wallet mm-hmm. is what I feel like I've heard. Well, well, it's interesting because I've actually known of Collider for a long time. My when I first when I used to think of Collider like two years ago, it was like um, kind of like derivatives trading almost, mm, right? Like right. betting on the price of Bitcoin and stuff. And now, you know, I'm excited to jam with someone there in Nostrica because it seems like they're really embracing Noster. And mm-hmm. I haven't played with their client yet, but I, I think it's like a full fledged client for the Twitter experience as well. Oh, cool. I'm, okay. I'm not sure, but it, I know their original you know starting point was very focused on trading. Got it. So they. have the kind of historical trading business kind of then they have I think a wallet must be related to that and then mm-hmm. they have a client and now this relay is this the first time they've done anything in relays I think so yeah okay. and to be clear I haven't tested the client so I don't know if it is compatible with Twitter yet but they're so definitely tweeting a lot about Noster yeah yeah I see them all the time on, <laughs> on Noster uh, so it says today we're excited to announce the launch of Collider Relay the first subscription based paid relay on Noster so the big difference here is that you're building like a monthly subscription relationship with them. You pay 8,000 sats per month, which is about $2 US, right? Yeah. And uh, high performance, low latency, subscription based. And so it starts to look at aligning the cost side of things Mm -hmm. with the value, right? Like if you pay a one-time fee to a relay for write ability, but then you could dump (laughs) how much data you want, that's sort of, you could get a mismatch there. Not that they've necessarily solved all that mismatch, but at least they say, look, there's storage requirements of anything, and so Mm -hmm. you're going to pay it more like an AWS bill instead of kind of the one-time gate, which I think is, you know, it it has to happen, and it's good to see that they're already experimenting in that direction. Well, it's really interesting, and we'll talk more about other relays that are experimenting with different models, but I think the one-time fee was like a good, like, okay, just like super, super MVP. Yeah, stopgap, like try something. Exactly, try something. I think the subscription model makes a lot of sense, and I think that's what people are used to paying in sort of the old world. Mm -hmm. However... We're already starting to see some relays um, experiment with the, or at least it's now theoretically possible to experiment with charge per megabyte or per kilobyte mm. of data transmitted. Right. So that's also interesting because if you, you know, you pay a one-time fee to write and then you abuse it, that's pretty dangerous. So, so maybe we'll see models where it's like subscription, unless you reach a certain limit, and right. then you have to start paying over that. Or yeah, something. which is actually kind of how we do micropayments. Nobody calls them micropayments, but that's kind of how we use our phones historically, right? Yeah, exactly. You'd, you get like a plan for how much data, how many texts, how many minutes of voice or whatever. And then... Uh, if and you over go crazy, time, you can pay extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then if you go over your limits, you, you know, there's like a, a separate per kilobyte or per text fee. I think most of those, I think a lot of plans are all you can eat today, but like the evolution included that for, I don't know, a decade or more probably, right? Yeah. So it certainly seems like a, a, worth mo- a worthwhile model for relays to explore. Cool. Um, anything else on Collider that you nope, wanted to look I at I just here? thought it was good to see the innovation. Yeah, mostly prevent spam. And they're, yeah, talking about all the all the different relay types that could occur. And yeah, I'm going to give that one a try. Totally. Yeah. And thanks to Collider, we've seen they've also been like regular listeners on our show. So thanks, yeah. for, thanks for the love, guys. Yeah, I'd love <laughs> it. Thank you. Um, cool. Uh, do you want to talk? Uh, so we, we did a little a little show. We were guests on somebody else's show. Yeah, that's uh, fun. Yes, yesterday, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about the Bolt.Fund design? Totally. Yeah. I mean, so first of all, um, huge shout out to Johns. Johns has been kind of doing this tireless and like thankless work for a long time. He was, I mean, for years now, it seems like, um, organizing Bolt.Fund, which does a number of many things, but one of their kind of most well-known things is they organize hackathons. Mm -hmm. Um, and their big, their first major lightning hackathon was last year and they got a bunch of cool lightning projects. You know, there's... I don't know, like dozens of projects that got submitted and some Mm -hmm. were pretty good. And so now they are early adopters of Noster. In fact, they were one of the first on their website to integrate Noster comments in a discuss style format, which Mm -hmm. is really cool. And I I, I think the word is not, um, not enough people know about them for how good they are yet. So that's, that's something I think they, they deserve a lot of praise and, um, hopefully more people start using Noster on their site. Anyways, so now they're running in combination with the a new community, the Nostra Design Community, uh, and Wolf, the accelerator in New York, I think is their main sponsor. They collaborated to throw a Nostra hackathon 
Um, well, it's like a Denoster engineering and design hackathon. And one thing that I love about John's and this whole community is, um, I don't know if he wants me to say this, but I think it's probably fine. You know, he came out of Ethereum first um, mm-hmm. before he became completely orange pill, blah, blah, blah. And, and that's good because the Ethereum community has always had historically much better UI UX people, just like objectively. And so um, what I've loved so much is he is a, a, a developer, but he's also a designer. So there's mm-hmm. always been this big focus on build beautiful apps yep. that are delightful. And so they have two tracks. There's an engineering track, like actually build MVPs of apps, but mm-hmm. then there's a design only track. And so there's the Bitcoin design community, which Spiral and a bunch of people were uh, really heavily involved with. And now there's a Nostra design community. So um, I just think it's awesome to see so many designers that are participating in the hackathon. And anyway, so we were on the show with him yesterday uh, as the hackathon kicked off. And I think there's already like two dozen, three dozen projects. Yeah. It's pretty good. Let's yeah. see. Here's the, we'll pull up the project. So Nostra hack and design this is the 10th through the 24th, so it's kind of just kicked off, I guess, five days ago. Yeah. Uh, we were, I guess, maybe part of the opening ceremonies. <laughs> or something. <laughs> and there's 37 projects here. That's awesome. Uh, I'm just reading some of this out loud in case people are just uh, listening to the audio. But 37 projects. So ShockNet is a wallet, connect your Lightning wallet, Lightning node to wallets and the web with Lightning Pubs, Noster lightning actions monstro is the one i mentioned the p2p platform kind of I'm local bitcoin that. and and just you know i mean some yeah. of these like i think shock wallet shock net and then um geyser which we'll scroll down to in a minute yeah. these were existing companies or projects right. that are now adding nostra integration which is yep. cool yep Did, how, but how by is, the way i i don't know yeah. if you want to scroll back up to monster yeah. for just a second i don't know i don't know him grunch i believe is his name okay the developer if yep. you're if if you happen to be listening or you know him you're listening and you're going to be in no streak i would love to talk to oh, this yeah. guy yeah, i think sure. that peer-to-peer um bitcoin trade like local bitcoins over nostril yep. is becoming like an increasingly important thing in this world yep so yep. Th- this is like this is like a very important project in, in the importance is it driven by some of the recent macro events absolutely is that kind of what absolutely if you i mean you know a lot of exchanges you may not trust certainly to hold your stuff there, but even like, you know, who knows, like you're seeing, we didn't talk about this at the top, but there's Nick Carter's put out some interesting pieces talking about, um, you know, are crypto banks being targeted? Mm -hmm. And if so, you know, maybe these exchanges are going to have trouble getting relationships to get your money on and off there. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important. I'm not saying it's going to happen fast, but it's to your point, it's important that we have options for all the scenarios to, for people to be able to trade Bitcoin for fiat. Right. Cool. So, yeah, if anybody knows the Mastro folks, uh, let us know. Yeah, love, be to, cool. love to meet them. Um, what else here? So, guys, are, are they, what are they doing? Are they building something now, or where's where's their head? Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't spoken with them in the last <gasps> week, but I know they're very excited about uh, <laughs> the, the allergies strike back. I know they're very excited about um, Nostra in general. I I think they're just experimenting right now. So, I don't know what that means. I know they talked about every campaign having its own pub key mm-hmm. um but that was like a week and a half ago so things move fast yeah so like my hope is within a week or two who knows maybe they're just like all in on Nostra, and, right. and that's very possible i wanted to see i think it was your idea to fund the uh fund the trip for some of the developers who couldn't like could we crowdfund a trip to nostrica did anything ever come of that or did anybody push that agenda forward so it was not my original idea someone else had proposed okay. it i thought it was a great idea and um Sadly, I think a bunch of stuff happened on their plate and then so that it didn't happen for this. But I think it's a great thing in the future for some of these other hackathons is, you know, for uh, deserving designer and developers that don't have the resources um, to figure out a way to crowdfund um, transportation, lodging for them is great. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see that. So write a note and make it happen. Yeah. Um, Microfinance protocol. So we talked about, we looked at Grower, I think, on the show uh, Mm -hmm. yesterday. Blogstack, I'm excited about. Blogstack. Oh, Coracle. Coracle. Have you played with Coracle? Not yet, um, but I've heard, I've heard good things, so I just I need to. Have you? Uh, I was just poking around with it this morning because they're the, the destination. Of, it was their blog that had the, like, what, I think it was called, like, what are the problems with Nostra? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was their blog. I think they have, like, a single blog post, and that's it. So I, <laughs> I, I by way post. of their blog post, yeah, it's a good, good blog post. So by way of their blog post, I was playing around with their site a little bit. Um, I probably can't fully represent it, but... Uh, uh, I mean, I just, I don't know enough about what its intents are, but it's, you know, another client that, yeah, I think it's a web client. Did it have any differentiating, like major differentiating features from a Iris or a Snort? Well, the the main claim, which actually you can see here, is that it's supporting Relays as a first-class concept. Okay. But I don't know what 
I don't know how relays are otherwise not supported as a first class concept. If I recall, and I don't know if it was these guys, but now that would make sense. There was one client that was showing every note. It would like show natively in the note the relays it was posted oh, to. Oh, I see. So it was probably these guys. I see. So it helps you. Like if I see a note, like if there were like a a republish of a note mm -hmm. that was pulled from a, a relay that I'm not connected to, it would at least tell me where, where to get was. that. And presumably so. my client software could use that. Yeah, where it might say like this was like published and you could like click and these are the 12 relays those are published to. Mm, I see. And and is that to help me discover new relays I might want to connect to? Presumably. Is that kind of the, the point? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think like how to know which relays I might want to connect to seems like <laughs> a big open question that seems to pop up again and again. Yeah, it's a good question to explore. Um, Nostros is an, is an Android client. Uh, including posting notes with text and images. I think that's actually kind of important. I know it has yeah. centralizing forces to it, uh, but I think making a good UX that's easy to post pictures can can really help. Nostr stack, and there's another one on there as well, uh, NDK or something like Nostr development kit. Like I'm excited to see more dev tools pop up. Oh, yeah. Like in general, just like how do you make it super easy for people to prototype apps? What is um, NDK? Is that is it a I think it's a thing? I think it's a completely uh, not in inspired by BDK and LDK. But <laughs> no, um, it's what's his name actually? Who I'm super excited to meet, Pablo, Pablo Valls oh, or whatever. I've seen yeah his name. Yeah, man, that dude's been publishing a lot of great stuff yep. recently. I've been just super impressed his website. The dude's prolific, and yes, yeah, so this is. Um, I'm assuming he is. In fact, I know that's I read on his page. He was experimenting with BDK, learning Rust for that, mm -hmm. um, maybe LDK from Spiral, um, but. I think he just wants to basically make it super easy for any developer just to have all of the libraries they need to start building Nostra apps from scratch. So as an investor too, I love seeing these like, just like yeah. dev tools that make setting up your environment a lot easier to experiment. Right. I heard, I think, I think it was on a Nostra note, uh, Moneyball was sharing with me that I think NDK and Jack were trolling Steve about picking it up. <laughs> Seriously? I, about, about doing some sort of NDK. Yeah. Uh, well, I think, I think it was mostly a troll. Better, uh, better move fast, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the, uh, the other one, of course, I, I need to solicit this oh, yeah. cool lighter. I am still obsessed with this idea. Yeah, I this still feel like thing, this man. needs to happen, which is I want to be able to read a <laughs> blog post, so maybe like a long-form blog post written mm -hmm. probably on, on a Noster kind of uh, focused blog presentation client. And then I want to be able to highlight some of the text, and I want to be able to read the other highlights that other people made on that. Yeah. I think that is a game changer for how we use the internet. I worked on the problem myself for many years, you know, long back and never was able to solve it. Uh, but I didn't work on it in a Nostra ecosystem. And I think in a Nostra ecosystem, it's 10 times, 100 times more obvious how this could work, how it should work, why it will work this time. Yeah. And so I'm super passionate about this. I haven't tried the cool lighter project yet, but I need to play with that. And yeah, I'd love to both hear from the cool lighter team as well as, you know, just see who else is working on this. What are the different approaches? You know, is there anything that I can play with early that might help help see yeah. how it should look? If you're the yeah. cool lighter team, this dude's thinking about this for years. So probably probably someone you should definitely talk with. Uh, scroll up though, I want to show there is that one and let me pop back to screen share here. Oh yeah. yeah that Japanese one. That oh, was super oh no. I wanted to at least mention it. Yeah. Oh, oh no Sendai, thing. right? I don't know what the hell this thing is. And I even spent a long time reading it all last <laughs> night. I still don't quite know what it is, but it's great aesthetic taste. And my understanding is, I mean, just a couple ideas stuck out from reading their stuff. Yeah. They called Nostra quote, the real metaverse. Right. And I like that. Yeah. As opposed to like Meta's controlled thing. Right. And somehow, I don't know, again, I need to do a much deeper dive here, but somehow like every pixel in this metaverse is it note or something? I, I don't know how they did it, but there's some like mapping of a three dimensional space right. to Noster. I, I yeah. don't get it beyond that, uh, but I'm intrigued. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know what it is, but it looks cool. I've I've actually played with it. Really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize like, it was live. A few a few weeks ago, I was okay. playing with something. I don't know if it was their the main thing, but I played with something where you could could like navigate around this 3D space, and there were a bunch of these little. You can see this screenshot is. Oh, there's actually a video or something. That's cool. But you can see the little notes. You just almost like imagine a you know X Y Z coordinate system, mm -hmm. and now there's these notes just floating around, and you can kind of zoom in and teleport to them, and then you can tap on them, and you can read the note. Okay, yeah. So this is going to show us. Oh, Check. cool. That's a little cube within the um, you know, within the space, and you tap on it, and then you get a there it is. 
and you get a kind of rendering of that note. Ah, and the video resets. Are we going to get to see the actual rendering? It's an infinite loop. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> and so is every there's pixel... A, there's what it looks like. Oh. So once you tap on a cube, then you get the note associated with that. Is every pixel associated with a note? Well, no. The So you're in a 3D space, okay. and most of space is space. It's empty. Okay. But then a few of these cubes are just floating in space at XYZ coordinates. God. And so you can navigate to any one of those. How do they map the XYZ coordinates? I'm not sure. It's an I. It may be made up. It may be have to do with like the time, date, something. Like maybe all the, you know, the first digit of the date is the x-axis and the timestamp is the y-axis. Yeah. I don't know what the huh. mapping scheme is to 3D space, but I think it's like interesting in that it's playing with the concept of 3D. I mean, I think, I think metaverse being only a 3D experience is kind of like a, like a assumption that I would not necessarily fully endorse. I think, you know, the internet itself is a great metaverse. metaverse. Yeah. And, you know, they're low fidelity 2D experiences, which I think, you know, it's about where we gather, how we connect, who we connect with, the people, the information, the content, how we choose to express ourselves within that. That's all. Those are like fundamental Internet things. Yeah. And then do we do it in a 2D space? Do we do it with a feed system? Do we do it with a, a game that we're playing that's all networked? Do we do it with a 3D space? Like those are all, I think, different lenses on what's ultimately like the metaverse, which is the Internet. So. The idea that we're just gonna like all strap into goggles <laughs> and then like play this game with each other, I think is not very realistic. I yeah. think there are great use cases where that that will be realistic, but I think the metaverse is just the internet. Yeah, like and that. let's just keep moving the internet forward. And one of the big ways to move the internet forward is like change the way publishing works yes. and ex- enable a lot more experimentation. So in a sense, like maybe Noster really is the metaverse. Well, and, and exactly, and, and this is something we've talked about before. But if Noster is the new web. Right or the new internet, yep. and the metaverse is just the internet. Yep. Then that makes a lot of sense to me. I do what I like about these kind of projects in general. I mean, it seems pretty far out there, but I like far out, and I yeah. like that. You know, it's you know, so far it's just been Twitter, and that's cool. But I like that people are starting to push forward, be like, wait, what would it look like if we had our own digital worlds? I also liked in their little note. I mean, these guys are very um, philosophically motivated, where they're yeah. like, you know, the. Zuckerberg's metaverse is a place that's meant to to mine you of your energy and show you ads and it's going to yep. be some kind of hellhole. Whereas the internet at its best is a kind of commons and it's free and it's yep. open. And hopefully the metaverse, whatever that ends up being, is one where you can have real economies where people can create new energy and create new wealth and not be mined of it. So. Right. And speaking of uh, Facebook meta, as you, <laughs> as you mentioned, did I read right that... Is, are they talking about doing a decentralized media tool? I don't know. What, I mean, what I does heard that some, mean? I heard something about that. I didn't research. I mean, decentralized and meta is about the most, like, I don't know, opposite. I, I, yeah. I just assume that's, like, BS, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I assume, I, I just think it's hard to fit the, the principles of this into a business model like that. So it feels like a little bit, you know, square peg, round hole. I'm but, extremely dubious. But I, I just want to at least hear, like, what is their approach? What is their philosophy behind it? Although, to Meta's credit, um, if I recall, the one of these open source models, which was not GPT three, but like kind of equivalent to GPT three or something like that, was a Meta model that they open source. Mm. So that's cool, right? So moving moving in on AI, I don't think we have much from the. I think they could do something interesting in AI. I don't think they're likely to do something interesting in decentralized, but yeah. Totally. Um, Open to hearing it. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So this is exciting. Okay. So e- even before we jump to this, so I just want to give okay. a little bit of context we'll set it up here. First. Yeah. So Ellen Bits, which is one of the most exciting projects out there. Um, and I've had the, you know, the great opportunity to work with Ben now for a little over a year. So Ellen Bits started, you know, it, it was and is an extremely active open source project mm-hmm. for lightning node management. Mm-hmm. And so you can think of it as something like WordPress for your lightning node. Um, and so on top of a lightning node that you run, you can offer all kinds of different account management and extensions. And so that's really cool because, you know, first of all, you need basic account management for like any kind of business that you run. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the extensions, like in the early days, they were the first to have like a Spotify jukebox extension, like cool stuff. And then, but also like very basic stuff, like, okay, I need a point of sale extension or I need a, I don't know, like a, um, QuickBooks type accounting extension, like all this stuff that's on there. And because it's all open source, anyone can throw it in there. And I think it was like a simple Python server, so a lot of people could program it. Just caught on like wildfire. 
And now um, what's really exciting to me is if you go to the, the origins of Ellen Bits, it started like the two main sort of progenitors of that project were Ben Ark, who's now the leader, and Fiat Jaff. Mm, and, yeah. uh, you know, you guys may have heard of Fiat Jaff uh-huh. for such things as creating the Nasser protocol. Yeah. And so um, in the early days, we'll talk more about the specifics of the new one, but they were talking about how do you create censorship resistant markets? And I think Ben had this idea for something he called Diagon Alley. And Diagon Alley would take it from the Harry Potter reference, but the idea basically anyone could What's publish. What's the Harry Potter reference? I don't. I don't really remember. It was like some like marketplace that you they sold basically everything. I okay. think. Yeah. So it's, it's like, basically the marketplace idea is being kind of re reused. Exactly. Yeah? But but what's interesting is so before Noster, you know, he published this idea of um, what happens if you want like is it possible that you can create a marketplace where you you know can post it to multiple different relays what you're selling and. Um, as long as you sign up with your private key, people will know it's you. And if one of them gets taken down, it's fine. Mm-hmm. So like a very resilient marketplace. Uh, and by the way, and I guess you, you actually, you, you can't pull that up if you want now, like yeah. th- before we get to the new extensions, this was the original Diagon Alley project, which I think was like two years ago, right? And, and so, so was, and can we just talk through this diagram? Yeah, so sure. I'm a customer. Mm-hmm. Am I only interfacing with indexers and not with stalls? So yes, that's my understanding. Although I suppose you could run, you know, a stall, you could run your own indexer as well. But the idea, my understanding was, you know, you have an Ellen Bits node. Sorry, you have a node. You have Ellen Bits running on top of that node. You, the idea was, you see, even see here, it says decentralized market stall protocol. So this mm-hmm. is pre Noster, yep. right? And so th- my understanding was that you could basically say, "Yo, here's like kind of like Shopify. You know, here's an item I want to sell. Here's the cost in Sats, um, mm-hmm. which would go directly to my node, and then you would publish that to various indexers, i.e., relays, right? Yeah, and then those indexers." are what customers would go to and they would they would go to the different indexers and say, hey, I know this is Ben's pub key or whatever. Mm-hmm. Show me everything he's selling. Mm-hmm. But they go to multiple different indexers. Mm-hmm. Okay, sounds a lot like Noster, right? Yeah, yeah. And so then they were working on this kind of together and then Fiat Joff created Noster protocol kind of as an extension of this, is my mm, understanding. Right. right. So anyway, so that's kind of the backstory on that. Um, they've done some Noster stuff since, but have been very heads down on lightning. And then today, just this morning, hot off the press, <laughs> yeah. Ben Ark was with Johns for part of the Noster hackathon and some of his team, um, I think Tao and a couple other people were there and they announced three new extensions. So the first one, which actually was the last one, but, uh, probably the most exciting is they took Diagon Alley, they rebuilt it on Noster and now it's called Noster market. Hmm. And so, and so the indexers are now relays? That's right. Properly. Okay, awesome. Yes, yeah, so they basically just took the original concept, customized it for Noster. It. Yep. And so now, I mean, I, I think this is a really big deal, like yeah. huge deal that people have not grasped. I mean, obviously yeah. it's just like a couple hours old, but like a paradigm changing <laughs> deal. Like anyone can just, you know, sell anything. And as long as you're subscribed to the relays and there's at least one relay left up to, you know, to publish it, like, you know, it's right. there. So, <laughs> so what is that? I'm trying to, I mean, cause it's a few hours old and I'm kind of yeah. hearing about all of this for the first time. I'm trying to think what are the first, are the first use cases going to be like NFTs or is it going to be dark web stuff or like, what? I look, I mean, so giant caveat, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I, they put on there, you know, sell stuff that's legal in your jurisdiction <laughs> and stuff. Oh, uh, <laughs> and buy stuff. That's yeah. Legal in your um, jurisdiction. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so I, I, it could be for anything, right? So I think um, I would expect digital products probably make the most sense for all the yeah. reasons we've talked about. Yeah. So, you know, whether that's just you're selling a JPEG, um, not even as an NFT, but just a JPEG. I mean, you could try that. Yeah. Like, I think they were just selling a picture on there of an Apple for like five sats just to like show how it works. Um, you could sell ordinals. Uh, but then you could also do physical products. And so that's tougher and that requires shipping and blah, blah, blah. But like, I mean, in principle, I think it's just like pretty extensively. You can do whatever you want. Is, is there any tool right now that enables you to sell a digital product like to a particular address? Let's say, like, could I, like, let's let's say I want to make a segment of the podcast that mm-hmm. was only for you know somebody who wanted to pay Lightning. Yeah. And so I create like you know Max showing off the shirt as like the premium segment. Oh yeah, that's and gonna then, the subscribers. And then <laughs> I I I push out a note mm-hmm. that says, "Here, buy this thing." Yeah. And I have do I have it like signed in a way, or it only can be decrypted by people who I've like authorized. 
by signing it with their public key if they've paid me or that's a great question um i don't think anyone's built that yet but it sounds like a great idea because it because if this digital thing is early for a marketplace mm -hmm. if i'm selling things digitally like you know maybe in the in the kind of non kind of decentralized world maybe i'd use like a gum road or something right it's yeah. like a tool that's built for that but i think how like digital rights management and how like the invoices and the actual media gets sent across is is you know easy in a sense you know it's got problems but easy in the centralized world but i don't know how that's even intended to work if we were you know if we were to use digital first products in this marketplace how do you sign them or limit them or restrict these them? are great questions and to be clear i'm not an expert on this either and ben if you're listening or whatever i mean it'd be great to, uh, who knows maybe they already have these features in there it's open source, so anyone can go yeah. in there and potentially do a pull request and add some of these features. Um, but I do think eventually we'll see some like very hyper-specialized, beautiful UI, UX products like Gumroad that are just like, uh -huh. for anyone that doesn't want to have to deal with any of the tech, do right. any open source software, just like click, and we'll do it all for you. Right. Yeah, it's amazing now that I'm looking through the GitHub, how, pretty crazy. how like similar it is in ethos. You can almost feel that this is almost like a path that, would lead to the creation of relays, right? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it it is. This yeah. this was the progenitor. It is fun to see that. I, I love kind of history and sort of how things evolve and how they got there. And this is a uh, kind of got fingerprints all over it. In a sense, and at the right? time, no one was. I remember Ben was telling me about this, and like no one was talking about it. It was just kind of this like weirdo thing on the internet. <laughs> and uh, here we are, Nostra. Anyway, so that's really exciting. But then um, as a follow up, because you know, as if that wasn't enough, <laughs> they also announced two different extensions as well. Um, one is Nostra Relay and the other is Nostra Client. And so this is a big deal because now <laughs> from your Ellen Bits instance, you can, and this is kind of similar to Umbrella, I guess, um, which in a way is, I guess, now that I'm saying this, um, Ellen Bits is becoming much, much more than Ellen Bits, but almost like your own, you know, personal server extension. Um, you can, but still tied to a Lightning Node, which is important, mm -hmm. but you can um, spin up a relay. They'll do that for you. And you can just put in the parameters and I haven't played with it yet, but like just from his demo, this is pretty cool. Some of the parameters on there are things like you can charge per megabyte of data mm. for rewrite for read, write. I don't know if it's both, but for at least probably so this is writing. relay software yeah. that like a, a third party yeah. relay operator could use. That's right. Use that kind of pay per Bite. right now live today wow with all free and open source software. so are they all are they running one as a demo are they like the first i don't even know I mean, literally right or? before we came over here oh, i watched wow. the talk i would assume yeah. so but like that's live right well i'd love it to i'd love to know what you know what relay how do i visit it how do i pay like let's let's by go the time we get off the air maybe someone will maybe drop somebody the first can tag one us and let us know yeah <laughs> how to do this but like that that's a big deal yeah yeah. That's crazy. So now we're going to, I mean, we saw the collider thing, but now you're going to see so much more experimentation and it just makes sense. And again, the beauty of this is because it's tied to a lightning node, as we've always said, mm -hmm. because it's tied to Bitcoin and lightning, you know, you can now experiment with economic models that are sustainable. Because mm -hmm. I mean, you, obviously you can't just run it as a hobbyist forever. One time fee, obviously that's not going to work forever. But now like, okay, if I can charge, you know, indefinitely per megabyte or kilobyte, that could scale forever. Right, right. Wow. So that's a game changer. And then if that's not enough, they also have the Nostr client, which I didn't go as deep on this one, but I think it's cool because... Is that a web client or a mobile client? Or Well, so here's the thing about it. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> My understanding is, so if just from chatting with Ben about this a couple weeks ago, like, you know, he is also very much in the camp of like, Twitter's cool, but like, that's not the thing. No one has seen the thing. Mm. The thing could be marketplaces, like mm -hmm. Diagon Alley or whatever right. they're calling now, Nostr Market. But the other thing is... Um, I mean, I think it's kind of all of our view at this point that this is going to rebuild the internet. And so yep. what Nostra Client can do, I think it's kind of like, um, you know, it can be like a little bit of a proxy as well, but, but you can basically say like, hit the example he gives, is let's say you want to run an ATM and, you know, you, or, or a point of sale service, you can now run whatever web, um, you know, queries or, or hooks it was doing before all over Nostra. So you could do something where, you know, you run, a client and this may not even have like this might all be like command line stuff this might all just be running on your, on your you know mm -hmm. the firmware or whatever for your your pos device and it can say if a payment comes in you know for this amount then make a call to this relay to you know okay dispensing cash or something yep. like that yeah so I, I haven't even fully wrapped my head around all of the implications of that mm -hmm. yet but like i think he's literally just trying to make something very basic for all kinds of devices to be able to hook into Nostr. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's exciting. Yeah. 
So like, I, I think this morning his announcements are like probably the biggest announcements in Noster since yeah, Noster. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Well, I have to actually dig into this stuff to to get more depth. But those, thanks for bringing those to light because yeah. I was not aware that any of that was. And happening. thanks to yeah, been in the Ellen Bits community. Those guys are just like literally. I mean, they're shipping so much. Like he, he even like posted an hour or two later, they had some like new Ellen URL stuff they're shipping as well. I, I just I've never seen such a velocity. Yeah. Even he was like, "Shit, I didn't even know we we had done this." Like, <laughs> and that's that's the beauty of open source. Yeah. And you I think know? even even before they made those announcements, we were talking about some Ellen bits things on the agenda here, right? Like, do they have an open source signing device? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was an announcement <laughs> a couple of days ago. So he also published an open source signing device. Anyone can build with like commodity hardware, pretty cheap. You can also buy. I don't know if it's a kit or pre built on there. They have a shop as well. For like, I think it's it's in pounds because they're in the UK. It's like twenty pounds, mm-hmm. um, but it's sweet. You know, if you want to be able to say, "Hey, I don't trust having my private key anywhere on my computer. I just want to store it, um, you know, on a hardware signing device." Great, they already have it open source. I think Fiat Jaff built a little uh, piece of software to interact with it for the web, and uh, you know, maybe in the future, Albi and other people will integrate with it as well. And um, yeah, it just makes it really easy to have your private key stored offline, which is great. Mm-hmm. And I guess while we're talking about private keys and management. Was there anything else on the Ellen bits? Not that they need to make more announcements. No, just that was these guys are like changing the game. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, There was this related to the signing stuff is this delegation issue. Oh, yeah. You want to talk? Is it uh, NIP 26, right? Yeah. This, I think, is also from that Pablo Vaz guy. Mm, Yeah. So he's been very prolific. I saw that he was, he's the one working on the Domus implementation i think right of i think he did. yeah yeah that's right he published the first pull request i think yeah um so should we take a little overview so nip 26 my understanding mm-hmm. is this is all about delegation mm-hmm. which just to to root it in like basic understanding mm-hmm. if i have a, a private key that lets me sign messages um, i don't want that thing going all over the place i like to keep it in a signing device would be ideal now today my signing device happens to be my ios you know <laughs> device with uh with uh Dama's app but i'd like to have a you know just external signing device and i think the idea of delegation if i understand right is to have multiple kind of sub private keys mm-hmm. that could either be different accounts or repeats of the same accounts or accounts that i want to later expire because like maybe something went wrong with it so it's just like a a way that i don't have to use my kind of base private key and can have a bunch of other keys that are kind of my daily use private keys that might be either different contexts or uh, or they might be like my real main use context, but not one that I'm actively, uh, basically one that I can revoke and I still have a more grounded something somewhere that I can you know, rebuild everything from. So is that roughly what delegation is all about? Yeah, that, that's my rough understanding. Again, okay. not an expert, but maybe also that some of the, the child keys, you have a parent master key and the child keys may have certain permissions. Like maybe it can only sign certain kinds of events as well. I think that's possible. Um, and then delegation in general, I think was also created as part of uh, minds.com inter- integrating um, with Nostra, which is interesting because mm-hmm. they were an existing social network. And so, you know, a user with an inpub there, or they may take their private key and say, hey, we're going to generate whatever another key for you minds that gives you whatever signing ability, but it is revocable or mm-hmm. something like that. So it's it's like, if you could imagine that if Twitter one day integrates with Nostra, they would need to use some kind of delegation. Right. Um, but in general, I am super excited for this. Would love to see, you know, it looks like Albi and others, um, I know it's very new, I haven't integrated yet, but I'm sure they will. And so NIP 26 enables signing events with one set of keys on behalf of a different set. That's, that's right. the core. And then under restrictions, under certain restrictions, so you can set conditions. Yeah. And so what clients support NIP 26? So, so far snort and gossip and then mm-hmm. Domus is in progress by Pablo. Right. Mm-hmm. And then what browser extensions support NIP 26? And that's NOS 2X and Albi. Yeah. Albi is, or sorry, NOS 2X is on right now and Albi is waiting to be merged and there's yeah. a PR 2063. I love it. Yeah. And again, the beauty of open source, they're all open source. So yeah. I don't know who even published the PR, but that's great. <laughs> and NOS2X is, is that Fiat Jaff's mm-hmm. kind of Chrome extension or kind of? That's my understanding, yeah. But it's so cool because now, like, yeah, like, you know, even though I think Albi is a great piece of software, I've been, you know, very cautious since getting pwned. But this is great. Yeah. Now I'll just you know, generate a new private key that's not my master key that I could always revoke. And that's what I'll use to integrate with the web. I've been literally waiting for just this. So right. I'm happy. That's cool. And did I see um, some announcement? There's like a new piece of hardware from Cold Card that it, does that have a Nostra related signing feature or no idea? I haven't heard because there's something that's there's some big new. It looks a little 
sophisticated you know, <laughs> compared to, I mean, I think properly they, they do a lot of stuff that kind of looks and feels very basic, which is like part of, I think, the security idea is like don't have a lot of complexity. Uh, but then this new uh, piece of hardware they have, I think it was just announced I don't know, weeks ago, and I thought it had maybe some Noster signing ability, but I don't know. I, I, I'm certainly not well-researched on it, so... Could be. I was raising it in case you had more info, but don't go on what I'm saying. Let's <laughs> let's read up on it before you don't trust verify. Go order. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so let's see. So where else were we? We were talking about uh, the Ellen bit stuff. We talked about NIP twenty six. Um, we talked about Collider. Oh, privacy. privacy yeah. You want to talk maybe, about privacy, or maybe you want to take this one? I think you got uh, this one there. Let's see. Or, or did I do this one? Maybe I did. This one, <clears throat> I think. I think I have a little bit of a sense of it. That I think the main thing, and, and we can sort of you know touch briefly what we do know is, like we mentioned, managing your keys can be a little tricky. Yeah, you've been pwned. We can use Albi. We can use Domus. We could have maybe a hardware signing device to make sure that we control the keys to our account that has built up you know our our contact list and stuff like that. Um, that's one area that you. You know, it's easy to screw up, but one that you want to maintain well. Um, but that's that's kind of not necessarily so focused on privacy. That's just like you know, kind of the security of your keys. Um, I do think a lot of what I understand from the article is the um, you know your IP address is revealed okay. as you write to a relay. And I think there's you know if you're running your own personal relay, of course that's not a problem. But I think most people are just using the default relays that come with the default clients. And so you're revealing your IP address to them, and the IP address means that that relay operator now knows probably something about where you live, maybe even just region or geography. Um, and they might, you know, imagine in the future there's some reason that you know somebody wants to find you, mm. like they might hack into a relay operator and be able to do that. So I think the idea that um, Noster is not built for privacy is good to note, so that you can you know be aware as you're using it how you're using it. And you might want to think about how to, you know, do things like here's a section on protecting your IP address, um, and you know, using VPNs and others, choosing the right relays. Probably in the future, as we're paying for relays. Oh, this is actually where I saw the relay.noster.band was. Oh yeah, that's there. right. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's a trust-based spam filter. But how do you, you know, how do you represent yourself to this network that nobody controls, but without revealing too much about yourself that you might not want tracked. Um, and I think this also shows just the importance of having various proxies, whether that's, uh, you know, you run your own via Umbrella or Ellen Bits, your mm -hmm. own personal relay, uh, or, you know, I know the Mutiny guys have Blaster, and there's a few of these others. Right. Or maybe you want your client to really only hook into one relay, which is itself a, a proxy that both um, writes and reads and aggregates on your behalf right. for you so that the, the IP address is wherever that proxy is running, not your home IP or whatever. Right. And have you ever been much of a tour guy? Or are you pretty sophisticated <laughs> with it? Or no, I mean I'm I'm familiar. I get how it works, but yeah. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm like an expert. Okay, because that that's I guess one thing you could do. It doesn't necessarily fully solve all of this. I don't understand all of the details of of where it does work or where it fails. Um, you know, I'm sort of like I say a very casual, you know, player with it. I'm not a I'm not doing the Edward Snowden, <laughs> <laughs> you know, expert uh, opinion version of it. Uh, so cool. Okay, so that's let's wrap that on privacy. Um, Nostra Connect SDK. Did you want to mention yeah, a little? Yeah, not a ton to say here. I just thought this was kind of cool. It came up in our conversation at um, at our Nostra Lightning meetup in person, and mm -hmm. which is nice because even though obviously we spend a lot of time tracking this stuff, it's still yeah. cool to hear about projects that you don't see in your in your feed. Right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, just the, like, I think it's, uh, this is a great idea. I think, think you'd actually build a great business out of this as well on top of a project like this, but you know, kind of like an octotype business, like how do you make it just super easy for different kinds of apps to integrate connect or log in with, with Nostr? Um, my intuition is that login with Nostr is going to become the norm pretty quickly. Yep. And so, you know, Albie's doing some great stuff there. Um, obviously NOS 2X has that functionality as well, but yeah, I think just making it super easy for apps to, to allow that, like they would log in with Google or Twitter and someone mentioned that this is a, a product or a, a open source project focusing on that. Yep. That's great. All right. Next up, uh, I think we're both excited about this prisms idea. This yeah. is actually a pretty, Do you want to talk about this one? <clears throat> yeah. So, um, 
in my understanding, I've, I've read this, uh, but I'm sure you have more to say. But uh, you know, we've talked about. I think we have done like the payment splits on Fountain, mm-hmm. where you know you can be on a podcast. Actually, I haven't even checked. Did you put me on one of those splits? You know, I I forget. I've I've messed with it, but I haven't. I don't know if I've done it properly yet. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> if not, it's, it's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I think I think Kevin Rook uh, mm-hmm. did a payment split with me when I oh, yeah. showed up on his show, and I did see payments come into me from that. And my understanding cool. is that you know he publishes out the work of you know we made together, and then some of the anybody who decides to tip or pay for that show or kind of value for value exchange for that show. Um, uh, you know, he he can set up the split, so maybe fifty percent goes to me, fifty percent to him, or sixty forty, or I don't know what the split is. But those are kind of done at the application layer right now, right? Mm-hmm. So Fountain would be the split point for that, which means that you know only it only works for people who are using Fountain, which you know hopefully a lot of people are using it, but it's less at the protocol layer. Mm-hmm. And so my understanding is the Prism's idea is take that same concept of hot like I want to pay to a specific address, but then there could be a programmatic split to yep. two or more parties. Um, and so Prism is a way to make that programmatic and at the lightning layer so that it happens as part of the lightning layer and not in a particular application. So the the easy, you know, the screenshot actually explains a lot here. There's like this yellow one. You can't probably read it too too well on the video, but this yellow one is an input, and then the Prism splits that into three payments, and then the green shows one of those payments actually is an <laughs> input to another prism that actually splits out into two payments. So this one person decides to pay value at that yellow goes in and actually ends up in four different wallets. Yeah. Right. That's cool. Um, so yeah, I don't know. And I think was this, this is proposed by Gigi, Gigi. is it? Yeah. And I, I don't know all the, I know he's like kind of a celebrity in Bitcoin, but I don't <laughs> necessarily know all of who is here. Like what's his, he's, is he a NIM or he's worked on other projects? He's or? a NIM and he is, I would say, most known for his essays. He, he does, I think, some software development as well, but he's most known for his essays. Um, and they're generally just like some of the highest quality, most mm-hmm. thoughtful essays out there. I really love his one on value for value. I think mm. it's one of the best pieces explaining the potential for value for value. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. I like in this one, I mean, I think what's interesting is just, I think he's just trying to like get people thinking, how can we make it normal to split payments everywhere? Mm-hmm. And so that could be at the protocol level, maybe with something like Bolt 12 in the future. Um, but it also could just work with uh, LN URL and Lightning addresses right now. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that's, I think he kind of hacked it together using LN bits right now. But I wouldn't be surprised if the LN bits guys hear this <laughs> and just make it the norm that any Lightning address is itself a proxy for other Lightning addresses. And I think that's also really nice for privacy, where maybe you don't want, you know, um, you don't want to reveal your like main like mm, address, right. but maybe you have a show and like if we have Nostra News and like we just reveal the Nostra News address, right? And then that splits to our private addresses or whatever, right? That's cool. Yep. And so here's the the little the rundown on it. So Prism is identified by a Lightning address. A Prism has one or multiple recipients. Another Prism can be one of the recipients, and splits are defined programmatically. Yeah. So those kind of four statements define this. Mm-hmm. core idea and so he put this out there obviously if he's been in the value for value blogging like he's he wrote it sounds like the canonical value for value or one of the most one important the, pieces yeah. on there um so we should link to that but uh yeah i think if we've got uh if he's it seems like he's cared about this for a while and so now he's proposing this and i think he's i think he said explicitly he's not going to work on it or <laughs> <laughs> is that right yeah I, I think in general he is more focused on you know trying to stir creativity but <laughs> Right. Someone else is going to implement, hopefully. <laughs> Got it. Cool. And is it, what is, is NIP33, is this related to it? You I know? think NIP33 is like a blogging NIP for like long form content. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm excited about that Maybe. idea because we've already seen some of uh, like where it would be used at the app layer. And if we can, you know, get, you know, get like a obvious utility like that that works and is useful at the app layer. And if it makes sense to get into the protocol without, creating other problems uh that seems like a or, good or, yeah the protocol or even like i think just getting at the lightning address level would be a game changer right when you say at the lightning address level is that separate from protocol yeah when i think of protocol like if you did that at the protocol level you know that would be more i don't know exactly how this will work but more like the bull 12 thing like mm. like that that's a protocol level change to have like persistent mm-hmm. qr codes to receive payments Whereas the LN URL and um, Lightning address kind mm-hmm. of world, that assumes 
that there's like a web server and I know there's mm-hmm. like, there's obviously a, a lot of like disagreement and blah, blah, blah about this. But the point is you could do what he's saying today without a protocol level change I see. with a LN URL mm, I change. See. Yep. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, so moving on, anything else to say about that or no, okay. Okay. moving on, we've got, idea. um, the automatic. So, uh, the, the founder of automatic is named, uh, Matt, uh, what's his last name? Mullenweg. Matt Mullenweg. Right. And that is the company that produces WordPress mm-hmm. and WordPress is probably, probably the largest open source commercial. Without a doubt. I, mean, I think at, like at one point web. I heard they power, yeah, half the web. Like half the websites that you see are running this software, which is kind of amazing. Crazy, yeah. So they're a big deal. And they've acquired lots of little projects over the years. So I, I remember like, do you remember the Gravatar project? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so I think the Gravatar project was like fun and blew up. And then I think they acquired it now, or at least at that point, then the guy was working on Gravatar at as part of kind of the WordPress automatic. They automatic. also have um, my favorite note app day one Mm. which is fantastic it's kind of like evernote but encrypted Mm. which is huge for me and it's just like a beautiful simple note-taking product that uh it has like a lot of nice features it's beautiful ui ux but it's encrypted and so Mm -hmm. that to me is is yeah like an incredible feature yeah so they've they've got kind of both they're at scale but i think have some of the always like frontier exploratory instincts Mm -hmm. that i think uh usually are you know uh demonstrate you, you sort of see those kinds of things demonstrated in startups or two people in a garage versus kind of an at scale org they also recently i think in the last year or two acquired tumblr mm, that's right yeah which is interesting because yep. tumblr is like I mean, they still have a lot of users even though it's not what it once was yeah and so who knows you, you know it'd be funny as i'm as i'm talking about this imagine a world where because of noster <laughs> tumblr becomes like uh, the big social network again that'd be cool yeah yeah there's a lot of porn on the internet <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, like, <laughs> Tumblr like was like, oh, yeah. before yeah, like, yeah. even pre just being born. Like, yeah. it, it was like a pretty fun site. I liked yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. It was re- really well designed, really well executed. It had this like nice, like the reblogging stuff yeah. just helped surface content to people in a in a way that was pretty innovative back then. Yeah, and now Tumblr will once again become a, the new home for nips. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the news part of it, though, so that's the background on Matt Mullenweg and WordPress. But the news is that they're playing with Mastodon yeah. and trying to get deeper on Mastodon and build a t- potentially a Twitter rival mm-hmm. is, I think, the the instincts here. But they're also looking at other things. So mm-hmm. Mastodon, so ActivityPub supports Mastodon, Pleroma, Friendica, Hubzilla, and PixelFed, which I didn't know, mm-hmm. Social Home, Miski. But then he's also looking at Noster, right? Is that is that what yeah. I read in this article? So yeah, so I had heard you know for a while that they were trying to run their own, I guess, Mastodon instance. So they were getting yep. deep with ActivityPub, and I didn't know if it was going to be a Twitter exactly rival or Tumblr or whatever. But um, his instincts—I've I've actually read a lot of stuff from him over the years. I think he's a really thoughtful, smart mm-hmm. guy, and his instincts appear to be very much in favor. In fact, like he's been very explicit about this, like in favor of the open web. Mm-hmm. Yep. So Noster should be right up his alley. Now I think you know he's probably been tracking this for a while, and Activity Pub is older and has you know, right. more following. However, I would guess—I don't know this for a fact—but that Activity Pub major developer that came over to Noster, we talked about a couple weeks ago, right? Um, and is building that bridge. I would imagine that and other people that he knows that are like, "Hey, maybe this Noster thing is yeah. better." Probably are in his ear yep. because there's a quote in the article where even though they've committed now to exploring Activity Pub for a while, he said, "You know, it's early days. We don't know who's going to win. I'm interested in Noster as well." Yep. Yeah. So that to me is a really big thing. If you get Matt Mullenweg and you get, um, you know, Tumblr and WordPress integrating with Nostra, like that's huge. Yep. And you got the payment use case built in. Absolutely. That's <laughs> so huge. I'm still curious about Nostra and other protocols. It's all very nascent right now. That's yeah. the quote from. But he did say the word Nostra. So. Yeah. so interesting that he is spending time on that. Yeah. Also, I guess he's also dabbling with Blue Sky, which is the, I think Twitter mm-hmm. launched a thing that was kind of Nostery or something. Yeah. Have you played with it? No. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like Matt strikes me from just following from afar is like, he's like the kind of tinkerer guy. Like he's probably yeah. going to try everything. Yeah. And my bet is if he tries everything, he'll probably like Noster. Yep. <laughs> yep. I think you try everything and then you just stick with whatever works and is best and you kind of believe is part of the future. So 
I yeah. think, you know, we, we have our views and like, you know, still open to changing if we find things that are totally. more aligned with how we think the world sh should work and will work. But it seems likely to me that I'll like it. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so in, this won't be our last thing, but uh, but let's let's not end on a downer. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, there was this article from Coracle that we mentioned called What Nostra is Bad At. And I think it's good when looking at these new technologies to, you know, to sort of be excited about what's possible and then be kind of sober about what is the problem right now, right. both so that when communicating with people, you can communicate, you sort of can establish some amount of, um, you know, rapport in your discussion. Because if you're just like, if you're just like totally hype boy all the time, you know, rah, rah, rah and you're unwilling to hear the downsides, I think yeah. that you just become like not a credible source of information. So, well, and it also hurts your chance of getting ultimate adoption because yeah. you're not there to like pushing for improvement. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you want to both like establish that you're excited about it, but then also listening to the negativity and figuring out, Hey, some of this negativity is actually, you know, true. Mm -hmm. Some of it is maybe misguided or just sees the world differently. So I actually appreciate when people write these kinds of things because yeah, I think it, it makes me think more of Cor Coracle when I see this. It makes me think, okay, good. They've thought about this. They're willing to see the downsides. Uh, and and do you want to give the overview of the downsides? Well, I mean, so yeah, to, to be clear, I'm, I, I'm certainly not an expert in this, but high level he was basically saying, or whoever wrote this was saying, um, that there's kind of like three different uh, areas that are potential trade-offs when you're thinking about a database. And he's like kind of thinking about Nostra as a database. Mm -hmm. There's, sorry, uh, yeah. get in here to see it closer. There's consistency, availability, and partition. Um, you know, the other way I was thinking about this is you basically need um, consistency, which is you can always read the data whenever you want it. Mm -hmm. um, or I guess, that, sorry, that, that's availability. There's partition, which I think is like censorship resistance. Like you're able to like publish anywhere and and get that. And then what was the last one? So, so consistency... Consistency is every read receives the most recent write or an error. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the one that it doesn't do well. Because right. I might ask a relay, mm -hmm. hey, give me the latest note from Max. Mm -hmm. And it and it might just give me a note it knows from Max, but it doesn't know the latest because right. it may not have published to it. It may not have gotten aggregated to it. So consistency is the place where Noster, the thing that Noster is bad at. Exactly. Right. right. And so um, the thing that's good at availability. So you know, every request receives a non-error response without the guarantee that it contains the most recent write. I could ask a relay, hey, do you have a message from Max? And they'll be like, here's one. Yeah. And like, great. We don't know that that's the latest, but it's true. It's available. Uh, and the partition tolerance is a, also censorship resistance, as you said. So a system continues to operate despite number of arbitrary messages being dropped or delayed. Mm -hmm. But the consistency, like, is there a path to improving consistency and like did you have any takeaways from how that could be done you know i don't have a great answer here yet and to be clear i actually yeah, skimmed this pretty quickly so i need to think more about this in the future but i think there are some people in fact they're in a little chat yesterday um the guy who's working on the arc app who will be at no streak mm. i think he has been talking about this issue and has some ideas around a nostr l2 mm. i don't know what that means but that's something we should explore with him I, I and that L2 is specifically focused on this consistency issue, or are there other goals that it may have? There may be other goals, but I think the big one that jumped out to me initially was this consistency mm -hmm. idea. But I think my my initial takeaway is that it's not a problem today and will never be a problem for certain kinds of use cases. And mm -hmm. I think he outlines this in the article as well. So for like the global water cooler Twitter use case, you know, you don't always need consistency. Right. Because you're just like looking at a random feed. If you don't see everything, it's fine. Yep. Um if you're doing a marketplace and you, right. that, that's where it's a lot harder to coordinate because you do need consistency of like, okay, well, is there a bid that's been accepted or not? Um, that's pretty important. Yeah. Is right? there a higher bid than the one I've made? Exactly. You need to be able to see that. You need to be able to see that. Like so reliably. I don't have a great answer there yet, mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure people listening to this will have great ideas. So I'd love to learn more. Right. Yep. Um, he also touches on the Git on Noster idea, mm -hmm. which I think, you know, we've talked about a few times here, but, you know, get on Noster, could you actually use the notes as a unit of messaging to help coordinate you know, effectively the features that GitHub mm -hmm. serves? And I think he was pointing out that, you know, uh, this, the source control, so the issue tracking and pull request system may be kind of the first things to do with Noster. Yeah. But because of the lack of consistency, you can't use that as like your main source 
of uh, for the source code. Yeah. It's so like one one of the goals I think in thinking about GitHub, you know, in a Nostra world is to you know, like someday we should be able to have like the Bitcoin core yes. source code, you know, not not dependent on GitHub, which is owned by Microsoft, which has kind of all the problems of, you know, uh, censorability or censorship possibility. Um, I think we'd like to move to a world where that's not possible and just gets copied and cloned and available everywhere. Well, and, and one thing now I am remembering this a bit more. Yeah. One way to solve this problem a bit is for certain kinds of apps, one way to solve it is just to use fewer relays, right? And potentially even to go to one mm. relay, which obviously then you sort of sacrifice mm. on the censorship resistance, but you can make different kinds of choices for different uh, applications. Like you might just say, look, um, you know, for our private repository, we don't care if it's open or not. Oh, so it's totally fine if we're going to do our own private, um, you know, repository for, for this coding project or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think it's interesting as one, like kind of obvious solution is for specific apps, you may only need one or two relays anyway. Uh -huh. Um, obviously then you lose the global nature and the censorship resistance, but maybe that's fine in certain instances. I would love to hear though. I agree with you. And obviously, you know, Jack agrees given how much BTC's pledge for the GitHub. It looks like there's a couple of people working on GitHub projects mm -hmm. in the Noster, uh, the bold off on hackathon. So I would love to hear from people there how they think this problem is going to be solved, um, especially in, in a true global GitHub. Right. And our people mostly who are trying to approach that bounty, are they mostly trying to do the the issues and you kind of more the like the metadata about it rather than the source code? Because I think that's I, I, I wasn't so aware that, th that that distinction I hadn't really thought through the distinction there, but I have no idea. Yeah. So it'd be really interesting to hear from them, some of those builders. Yeah, and I wonder if some of the L2 stuff that you were mentioning w could help sort of solve some of this problem, like in the marketplace. Yeah. So if you have, like, maybe you need to choose a centralized provider to help coordinate the marketplace for consistency, but maybe you could actually, maybe you don't have to rely on just a centralized provider, but you could have like a protocol level thing that lets you swap to different providers. Totally. Or, or what you might end up doing is federations. Hmm. Like you might have like federations of relays for specific marketplaces or hmm. applications. Right. Like I'm going to sell this thing mm -hmm. and then I just trust that, oh, I'm going to run it on this relay and that's how that sale is going to happen. Yeah. Or even like these like five relays like together, hmm. you know, they have their own like kind of L2, their own protocol amongst them where when I publish, I know it's going to get published to all these like other, right. other guys, but there's no guarantee beyond that in the network right. it's like subnets so the but the lister of the marketplace item would choose kind of which yeah. center or federation to use but presumably the next time they list an item they could just use a totally different set and if the place where they choose to list it shuts them down they could go somewhere else exactly and, and you know what's going to be interesting to see is you know again with all this open source software you can do all kinds of things with it. hopefully very good things but yep. you could do bad things <laughs> whatever and so uh, <laughs> whoever's judging that but you know, you could easily see a world where there's going to be, I mean, this is almost certainly going to happen. There's relays that, let's say you're you're a, a view for a marketplace in the United States or the Europe or something. Mm -hmm. There's going to be certain relays you're allowed to index and certain relays mm -hmm. you're not, almost certainly. Mm -hmm. And that already, you know, is is <laughs> one way to, uh, to solve this problem. Um, and that seems pretty inevitable to yeah. me. <clears throat> like jurisdiction... Exactly. specific relays and and it might even be the case that you know maybe in you know in the uk i when i have the most popular view for a marketplace i may be allowed to access this one relay but for whatever reason in the u.s that's not allowable and so right. maybe the view is like slightly different based on but then you'll obviously always have the the free range ones as well but right right yeah, yeah it's interesting i i, I guess it it makes me think that some of these, because I've always been concerned that the order book problems are hard to, hard to do without centralized providers because of the way like wash trading and stuff could work, uh, you know, kind of price pumps with you know bad actors. But I wonder if that if the idea of being able to have centralized providers but more portable, yeah, who the provider is can help sort of solve the centralized need while reducing the actual dependency. So yeah. You get get you trust minimized, but you can't remove trust. Well, and I think that's that's like the kind of core foundation of Noster. Yep. Yep. It's not decentralized, it's just or trustless, it's trust minimized and yep. on the spectrum more decentralized. Yep. So yeah, anyways. Cool. Cool ideas. I'm sure people will have good responses to that. Yes. And if you come up with cool ideas that need funding, 
Yes. <laughs> There's this page called... Where should they turn? Where should they turn? They should turn to Noster.capital. So I think this was built by Masiak, right? Mm-hmm. The founder of Hive One. Right. And Hive One, we've talked about... I actually made a video with them, which I haven't published. I'm, I've got a s- stack of probably half a dozen videos that I still need to publish. I've kind of been... Do, do you make videos? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, nominally, yes, but I haven't published one in like a week now. Oh, wow. Since okay. our last Noster News, I think. I've just been kind of... I've been a little slammed with some other priorities in life. With a few things happening in life. <laughs> but, uh, and, you know, not least of which is booking Nostrica oh, dude, yeah, and figuring out it. ground transport and air flights. And, yeah. But anyway, I'm happy to say I've now got Nostrica, you know, both accommodation, ground, and flights all arranged, both there and back. We're good to go. Um, so we're good to go. No more stress. Now just figure out how to lug the pod equipment over and we should be good. And hopefully we can do it without the, the mic still. Yes, I'm. I'm still deciding about that. Okay. Yeah, I'm still deciding about that. Well, I'd like to, I'd like to, but it depends on how much post production we want to do. Yeah, uh, we'll see. But anyway, so but I have Capital. Yeah, yeah so I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I had a, uh, I, I made a video with Masiak and talked about Hive One and sort of they're kind of a Twitter discovery service that's looking at how to be a Nostra discovery service and how to help sort of solve some of that problem. The same stuff they've been working on in the Twitter ecosystem, but do it in the Nostra ecosystem. And so you know, sort of tangential to that, um, they were putting together this Noster.capital Airtable, or I guess Notion, mm-hmm. and, um, and it's a curated list of investors who want to back startups building on Nosters. Of course, in the VC funds category, we have a single VC fund. First, baby. <laughs> You're both number one and your last place, sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, the, uh, that's the trick with being the only... <laughs> The only one crazy but enough. Hopefully, we'll get a, a second one in here, so you could uh, you could be the proper first one, yeah. first place. <laughs> there we go. We need some uh, ankle biter VC fund uh, trying to come up and, and try to take your place. But anyway, yeah. Got- and, and, and by the way, like I, I do hope that happens pretty soon, and you know, particularly at the later stage as well. I really, you know, I hope some of these Series A funds forever are going to be excited to to hopefully fund yeah. some of our pre seed C deals. So. Yeah. And so the basics here are hive mind. You write two fifty k to one million dollar checks, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, and people can find you, of course, uh, according to your NPUB, You're pretty easy to find. Don't go to the pwned one. Go to the real one. Yeah, that's right. Uh, HiveMind.vc slash Noster, and I guess you must have your NPUB on that as well. Yeah, I, I, I updated that after Perfect. I got pwned. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's how you find that. And then there's a few that are called, I guess it's listed as VC funds individuals. Yeah. And so there's. Max also shows up at the top of this list. I don't know why he put me there twice, but yeah. <laughs> Just more airtime. But hey, who's that guy? David King. I, <laughs> I've heard of him somewhere. So yes, I'm also on this. Uh, so I just asked him to update that because I'm, I'm interested in this space a lot and I'm interested in angel investing and you know have been uh, active in trad tech, you know, Silicon Valley style trad angel investing. Like <laughs> uh, angel investing, not not uh, not so much the uh, the crypto flavor of things but more you know somebody building a marketplace or a you know SaaS business uh for a long time and you've had some pretty big hits in your portfolio no yeah some things have really worked out (laughs) what would you say is like your like i don't know one of your favorites my 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 favorite is is my favorite for maybe a different reason than most people because i actually don't i don't look at angel investing so much as a purely financial thing but i look at it as like relationship building with great people and founders and people I just want to like spend more time with. Yeah. And it's fun too. <laughs> Su- super fun to like learn about these ideas and learn about the future. And, um, and so, you know, I think my, my favorite is, well, it's hard to say favorite, but one <laughs> of the ones that I really have a particular affinity to is, uh, these two guys who I had worked with before many years ago, I don't know, 13 years ago or something. And they went and started this company called Cambly. Mm. And it's uh, a service to help people find a native English speaker oh. that they can speak with. So I didn't know that. Cool. Learning English worldwide is a very important skill. Yeah, and it huge. actually it helps people economically lift themselves up. Yeah. And so it's something that lots of people want, but it's hard to get good at English if you don't have anybody to practice with. Totally. And because it's economically lifts you up. If you get good at it, people are willing to pay for that. So there's a natural marketplace that can form between people who want to lift themselves up by improving their English speaking and people who natively speak English who are willing to sell their time to help improve that. So there's a very nice marketplace that forms in Cambly, but the the two guys, um, I just, I've known them for so long, love them, everything about what they do. 
when I first invested, I said, I don't even like this idea that much because it didn't feel like it was going to work. <laughs> I like I like the concept, but then I thought, uh, I don't think it's going to work, but I want to invest because I love you guys, right? Yeah. And, um, always the right move. And, the, and, the, and then it, it is, it is working. So <laughs> that's super cool. And by the way, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but when I, you know, I lived in Mexico for a long time yeah. and I, I was very lucky to have a lot of people on the ground helping me learn. But, um, one thing that helped me take my Spanish to the next level was for three months, there was this company, I forget the name of it, but it was like all you can eat Spanish lessons. Oh yeah. She says you pay something like whatever, 150 bucks and you can just take as many lessons you want that month. Uh-huh. And, uh, I was, you know, at the time I didn't have a job, so I was just doing a <laughs> lot. And so right. I got a lot better in those three months, just going nonstop practice. And that was theater. like content that you were going through or you were working, we were, were just practicing talking. with other people. Yeah. Okay, we, were just yeah. Ta- we were just talking. Yeah, speaking say, is the whole thing. Correct. Yeah. Anything I say. Yeah. Yeah. That's wrong. Yeah. It was super fun. Yep. And, and David's being very modest here, but you've also had some other pretty big wins, right? I mean, you had clubhouse Anchorage, a couple others that are probably even bigger. I'm forgetting, but yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, I think being around here and just meeting people and trying to help out it's, I've been fortunate to get involved with, with some good, Good projects, good people. So. Yeah. so our hope now, obviously, is that this is just the beginning of the list and there's going to be a lot more VC and angels that come in and get excited about Nostra. And yep. yeah, the party just keeps growing. Yeah. And I think this, I think something in this like Nostra open source, I don't know how it's all going to play out, but I think there's just the right kind of, there's the right kind of curiosity and energy from people who are building, despite the fact that there's no obvious there's, n- there's no obvious way to make money at this stuff yet. Yeah. Like maybe that becomes more obvious later, but I think the fact that there is no obvious way yeah, exactly. and people are still choosing to spend all of their time with it, right? I think that is what, what something good would look like early on. Yes, agreed. And that's what, you know, we're all going to get together. Hundreds of us are gathering in Costa Rica with no real economic reason totally right but we want this thing to exist and we want to meet all the other people who are building it i think and those it's fun. are it's fun right and i think at the end of the day i mean like honestly I, like i'm sure we share this as you know sort of early stage investors you know growth stage stuff when you like it's just kind of boring like or yeah. at least to me it is like but this is fun where it's like you know maybe there's a huge economic upside maybe there's not but like it's intellectually the most interesting thing in the world right, right. now by far yeah so yeah if you're if you're investing later you're basically running spreadsheets exactly but when you're awful. when you're doing this early <laughs> stuff you're just you're meeting like two people in a garage with a dream and it's like wow it could go anywhere super fun yeah so more more of that and then so what so we've got uh, we've got our trip so we're basically wrapped with the the main mm-hmm. news story so yeah. we've got our trip coming up friday mm-hmm. um, again we're going to be we're going to be making videos on Saturday. At least we've got some schedule already, and probably yeah. more. So if you're if you're there early, let us know. Totally. So we can uh, grab grab some time to hang, and uh, and then at the conference we'll be doing grabbing people, doing videos, meeting everybody, just hanging. Wild now, yeah. And then uh, and then when's when's the next uh, when's the next DZ meetup? Great question. Do we, we have, have, we have not the, planned that yet, but booked yet. TBD. So if you're in the area, definitely send me a DM. All right. Cool. Cool. All right, guys. I guess that's a wrap for for now, but yeah. Pura vida. See you soon. Pura vida. See ya.